Chicago fans, Joshua Hanlon here with Boone Langston, and we are at Brick World Chicago 2019, and we're about to launch into our whole convention hall tour here at Brick World Chicago. So for everyone who's watched our past Brick World coverage, you will be familiar with these videos. We kind of take you through and do our best to show you every single build on the whole convention floor. So uh, strap in because this video will probably end up at three to four hours, I would think somewhere in that range. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, man, I love that we got to start out with all that Duplo, and then we move right on to this, this fantastic recreation. I guess I say recreation. I don't know that it's a recreation. Maybe it's someone's original design. It has a uh, slightly foreign-sounding name, so uh, it is very nice architecture here. The, the roof techniques are always incredible. I think that's what stands out with this type of architecture, and then also the way they incorporate the windows in different styles. So we make our way down then. You've got the Chamber of Secrets here, uh, some nice rock work. That'll be the first of uh, many variations and types of rock work you see on the builds uh, here at Brick World, which is just, you can approach that in so many different ways. Got some Minecraft here. So I think there's a few different uh, Minecraft layouts. Uh, this one actually kind of hinges out, which is interesting. So it kind of opens up there in the middle. And next we've got Scarif. Scarif, uh, an under, underdeveloped Lego uh, theme. It really is a shame we haven't seen more Scarif builds, isn't it? Yeah. We have some smaller vignettes up top there. One, an old Star Wars set there. Uh, one of the, You don't see that one out in the wild real often. And then a couple of massive uh, cranes, which are just completely crazy. Uh, the one has giant treads, like two tread wide tracks. And then the other is actually on train tracks over there. Yeah, I like how they made that sort of turntable for the crane around, uh, you know, this Lego train track. It's really, and the, the, the weight on the back here is so crazy. So these, these builds, you don't see a lot of builds of this scale and size. It's, it's really insane. Next to that is a cool, I really like this, this build here. Uh, this is a World War I build, but they kind of built the different kind of geographic areas of the war side by side. So you see kind of the fighting in the Middle East. Uh, you get kind of the Western Front with the British and the French fighting the Germans. You see some of the snow covered areas there. So I think you get a bunch of different terrains and I like how they kind of contrast them side by side there. It's a nice build. And we've got some Clone Wars. I really like how this uh, creator just wasn't afraid to take on the carpentry to facilitate some flying ships there. Really kind of rounds out the, uh, the display of this battle going on. Yeah, I think the, the kind of carpentry part of it, as you said, is kind of as much a part of the build as the, the Lego itself. And so it really helps incorporate all of the flying ships. You see the build kind of spills out into this area here as well. We've got a few train models here, so we'll be seeing lots of trains later as well throughout the tour. Lots of incredible train layouts and train models uh, at Brick World. As we round the corner, uh, this is some architecture, uh, I believe, from the Los Angeles area. Yes, if, yeah, so this is uh, some architecture from that area. So this builder, I think, is based in that area, and so he brought some of his models out here. I really like how he's displaying these large buildings on top of these, you know, rotating, and he's got some really great lighting effects going on in here. It's good stuff. John's showing his city hall model there. He's even got smaller vignettes and everything, so some really fantastic work. Let's come down here, you got a little USS Enterprise. Then you've got the Lunar Pride Parade. And... Let's see, you've got the History of Madonna. This is like a custom collectible minifigure series someone put together. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. <laughs> All the different iterations of Madonna, they've even gone to the extent to recreate, you know, a custom or a, a collectible minifigure series, you know, insert with all of the different variations there, and even a cellophane package for the outside. This is really impressive, uh, kind of custom recreation work here of a, of a product. This is some next level work right here, yeah. And this is a good example of one reason I think I love doing these tour videos that shows is because there's a lot of these smaller displays like that can get lost among everything here. And so it's so cool to be able to walk around and catch all of that. Here's the Golden Girls house. This, yeah, as the brick says there, this was on the Lego Ideas. This got 10,000 votes uh, on Lego Ideas. 
Yeah, and right next to it, I'm really loving this Gem and the Holograms display here. You know, this was a children's show from, man, was it the late 80s or the early 90s? But that car, that, that roadster with the different shades of pink and the yellow, that's just a really fantastic looking model there. Got a nice Batgirl mosaic. And it looks like you got like a, the Pulse nightclub memorial build. Keep coming down some smaller vignettes here. So you see a lot of these uh, smaller builds. These are, I think, a whole series done by Dave Pickett. Actually, several contributors think Dave Pickett kind of put together this series of vignettes here. Oh, it's the alphabet. That's great. Oh, so that's true. <laughs> A is for Albus Dumbledore. F is for Freddie Mercury. That's great. Uh, Dave Pickett from the Brick 101 channel, if you aren't familiar with his stuff, uh, lots of awesome content over there. Check it out. It's a nice little wish you were here face uh, photo opportunity almost. Little town layout. Some very detailed mosaics here with like the black and white colors. You don't, you don't see this style real often for mosaics. Kind of a different approach. I really love these uh, Technic assemblies here. I immediately recognized this one as the Diora 2. It's based on a very early uh, Hot Wheels model from the late 60s and they sort of redid it in the early 2000s and got a couple surfboards in there in this sort of futuristic looking almost you know car truck-esque vehicle. And three other models here. Really impressive builds. And then couple uh, these look like they're based on a book here and nice little moon models there so then we'll come down this side here so interesting note here at brick world i believe this is the first year that they have not you know if you've watched our past videos or been to brick world the vendors are almost always against the wall but this year they moved all the vendors to the middle of the convention space and so the the builds actually go all the way to the wall here so we'll make sure we capture all of this stuff uh even on the the edges of the convention hall We've got a, like a dystopia build, uh, Tower Strike, and a little blacksmith shop, a little Ninjago build, some Bionicle type creations here. Come down the Cyber Shark, a lot of little details in there. It looks like it would run on maybe the 9 volt train track. Uh, these these are cool. These sort of large recreations of minifigures. I love that one. The guy in the dinosaur costume, and we got Santa Claus next to him, and then there's uh, Superman and the Flash racing. These are really nice recreations of minifigures. That's a fantastic scale. The Simpsons one here is really great with the skateboard. And then we got Batman and Robin, and some of the other characters from the Lego Movie too. And above them is uh, Mount Clutchmore. This is great. Oh, and you got Wildstyle in there spray painting the streaks in her hair. Unikitty up on top. This is a, man, this is beautiful. It's amazing how well they captured those characters in a single gray color. Yeah, this is Roger Day, who I think did the minifigs we were just looking at as well. And yeah, just really fantastic creative work. I think it's a it's a great approach to kind of the iconic characters of the Lego movie, but also just kind of iconic Lego characters in general as well. Some smaller characters next to them here. And then we've got the androids of amusement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the one with her arms crossed. She's just like, okay, no thanks. Some great little kind of robot mech characters. And then down, moving down the tables, we've got these are kind of floating rock pieces, floating islands. Uh, some of them have the waterfalls running off. Creates lots of beautiful scenery. Yeah, I really like how well this is done. Uh, you know, floating islands is a really cool idea, and they've, they've just uh, done a really nice job executing getting these things above, up above the table and using kind of the waterfalls on the right there as, as the uh, part of the structure that holds it above the table. And uh, this, is, this is really nice looking. 
We've seen in past years, I know some collaboratives that have included those types of builds, so I'm not sure if those are from, from past years or not, but yeah, great work there. Lots of micro builds here, fun details. We've got the raptor pit from Jurassic Park. The best, the best Jurassic Park film, Jurassic Park. <laughs> I've even got some lights down in there, flashing on and off. Medieval mining, you got the, the angry monster in there, sort of the lava. It's like there are a bit of a battles going down. I like the guy with the, the cannon there. It's pretty good. Here's some more Bionicle characters. This one down here really stands out. Biff, it's got uh, like four arms, massive legs. <laughs> Each of his arms is a different color, and even his legs are two different colors. It almost reminds me of, you know, a Voltron-esque, where, you know, the different sort of characters come together to form one. I, I wonder what inspired uh, this builder. Some more smaller character. This guy with the uh, little ma uh, magnifying glass there, almost like monocle type of thing, is really nice. Tree build in the back there on top of the cave. Got a zombie goblin. <laughs> and some snowmen. And then we come out here to a very large classic space layout. Got just about every classic space uh, set here, I think, in existence probably. <laughs> Almost. Almost? Yeah, no, I have. Um, every set is here. I just haven't got them all set up yet. There but you go. by. Probably midnight or so, you will have a complete lineup of every classic space set. Very impressive collection. So yeah, uh, eventually all the classic space sets will be out here. Yeah, I really have a deep love for classic space. I, you know, it goes all the way back to my childhood. I had a, had some and have collected many that I didn't get to have as a child. It's definitely a thing that a lot of people really love. The monorail track running throughout it is always very cool to see. We'll keep moving down here. I think we actually have the builder near some of the builds here. So uh, always, always great to see you, Alan. Always incredible work that you have here. So what did you bring this year? Um, let's see. First, we have uh, what I call the diamond in the rough. Um, got a vignette of Aladdin right here. Um, I'm actually excited for you guys to see it completely lit up at night because it looks totally killer. Um, got my Oz uh, mock right here. You can turn on a tornado right here. <laughs> you always got to have the moving tornado. <laughs> and then, you know, since I'm known as the Block Mamba um, in the Lego world, I went ahead and just uh, made the snake to wrap around the trophies. And then for the humor category, um, I've got sick Lego skills. So I have the actual trophy that's throwing up and uh <laughs> you need the mop and uh the container bucket right here it's a very literal interpretation right, there right <laughs> and then uh right here on the mosaic you know since i'm really known for those um went ahead and did this nike piece and it's kind of a mosaic lenticular 3d deal and um what happens if i can have brandy uh Go ahead and shine the light on it. You can actually see the block mamba come out. So uh, oh. you'll you'll see it at <laughs> nighttime. Yeah. That is a very cool idea. I like it. Thanks. I appreciate it. Took a little bit of time to figure it out. Um, when I was building it, uh, she actually noticed that there's two ways that we could have done the snake. There's the snake head here where you see the mouth and the eye is actually here. Pattern comes around, but then I switched it around in order for the Nike um, to use as a tongue as a pattern, as you can see it in there. So uh, sometimes you come up with an idea and then you see a couple other things and then that's hidden. And then, you know, it dawns on you and you're able to knock it out the park. And people are like, dude, how'd you come up with that? Well, sometimes it's on purpose and sometimes it's on accident. It just works out nicely yeah, sometimes. All the time, really. So, yeah. 
Awesome. Well, fantastic work. Thank you for taking us through the builds. Always great to see your, your builds here at the show. Appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome stuff there. So we'll keep moving down the line and got this medieval village. The cats and the hats are pretty nice there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is that is something. Cats and hats. I like it. A nice little Black Falcons vignette. Shout out to some of the, the cooler medieval Lego themes uh, throughout history. And then got a little isolation build. You got a, a smaller bat cave. I actually really like what they've accomplished on this footprint. You know, some of the bat caves you see are just massive, and uh, there's so much going on. But this one, they've uh, they've incorporated just a lot of little neat things into what is that? A 48 by 48 base plate. It's good, good stuff. And then next to that is the Motherlode Mountain. So kind of a nice western. Most uh, gold mining type of scene with a build on top of the mountain tunnel with the train coming out. It's always cool to see. Got the condos there. Nice little like run strip almost, runway. And then some sort of sci-fi military builds. You got some tanks, some mechas, some ships, all sorts of stuff. I really like the color scheme on those mechs there. Uh, you know, a little bit of tan, a little bit of brown mixed in with the green and the grays. That's a nice look. And then here we've got some, some more lenticular mosaics. So these are, for people who haven't seen our videos on this type of mosaic before, built with the, the cheese slope pieces. And so when you look at it from one direction, it has one picture. And then if you switch your perspective, it has a different picture. So you're able to achieve uh, some really fantastic designs the builders are when, when you use those types of techniques. So... Uh, there's a space race one here, and then the seasons lenticular, I believe, is from last year when that was the, the theme of the show. And then there's one next to these here that's uh, kind of a completely – I'm not sure if there's a name for this style. The builder calls it a diamond mosaic. I don't think I've seen anything like this before, Boone. I've only seen it online with some other – I think from some other images from maybe another creator. But this is a really interesting thing where you look at it from – you know, completely one 90 degree angle or you look at it from the other 90 degree angle and you don't really see the image, but then you come at the 45 and you see that we've got our friend Benny here. Cool. Cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's a very unique approach to it. And it looks like they might be working on a, a second there, maybe in the process of putting together another one. And then here's the photo opportunity as Boone will model it for us. You make a great astronaut. <laughs> This is one small brick for AFOLs, one giant brick for mankind. Thank you for those inspirational words. <laughs> let's, uh, let's come back this way just to make sure we don't uh, miss the... We'll start doing the loops down here and then keep making our way down. So we'll launch into the Rebel Lug uh, booth here, which is actually... So I think starting down here... Not uh, uh, down there at that section is a whole collab. So we'll start with these individual builds here. So here's like a nice little Middle Earth build. Uh, some more Middle Earth. I like you've got the pink Batman cameo there in the midst of some fantastic waterfalls and rock work. And then the big battle taking place. And then some of the, the best spaceships I think I've seen here at Brickworld this year are on display here. This one particularly down here, the Singularity Engine. Uh, the angles on that, just the whole design is incredible. I really think the color scheme is what these have going for them. It's so simple and it's subtle. And the way that they've incorporated some of these in the, in the, the 11th hour down there, how they've stacked plates and tiles to achieve these really thin pinstripes in you know two different blues. That's really good stuff. And with the yellow, man, the white, it's clean, but you got the little bit of blue in there, the little bit of yellow. It's good looking stuff. And I just noticed looking at some of the smaller ships, I guess it's sort of a Maersk theme. Uh, kind of ties in with the blue there. So some of the container ships there have that tie in. <laughs> but yeah, fantastic work, uh, Spencer there. 
And then this section here, so starting here, and I believe as we go all the way around the corners, all the sort of Rebel Lug uh, collab this year. So these are individual builds done by a number of different builders. But uh, that's their whole, they kind of made up this whole backstory, which is really amazing that they were kind of able to create the story and then make the builds based off of it. Yeah, this is, uh, I love the images that they've created, you know, the the branding that they've created to go along with this collaboration. I think particularly what's interesting is the combination of Star Wars with some Asian-inspired architecture, which you don't see very often, so sort of a pagoda type of effect, that sort of thing. And then again, the landscaping, I think, stands out maybe more than anything else in these builds, because all of it is just really incredible. Even that tree kind of over the gap there. Yeah, and I love the drill. You know, they've taken this landscape, done some really incredible things with it, as you said, but they've also inserted this very mechanical thing, and they've done some really fine detail work with it. And you put those together, and you get this wonderful juxtaposition, right? And, yeah, there's just so, so much detail packed into each and every one of these builds. It's amazing. Here again with the, the nice tree work and the very smooth-looking wall lines here you've got the big juggernaut as we round the corner like the statues in the back like brick built wheels on there it's very impressive wow yeah those are nice i had to take a closer look at those just to kind of wrap my head around how they're assembled i like it and then this, I think, is one of the largest sections here. So this kind of takes place in a cityscape. Uh, but the colors here are just all over the place, which is amazing. The different colored buildings and then also kind of the ruined street landscape is just a very nice contrast. Yeah, and it, you know, it kind of highlights for you when you, you have a fandom like Star Wars, you have this world that has been created, right, and this, this rich kind of narrative that has been developed over decades and you can imagine that that universe is so vast that you can tell almost any story within that universe. You can imagine these settings that we've never seen in the films or, you know, in the, you know, the, the cartoons and whatnot. Um, but this is, this is impressive, and, and I just think it's a great kind of nod to creativity and how creativity feeds on creativity. And another uh, detail here that I don't know if I've seen used before is like the, the Technic pieces there for sort of the, the sidewalk slash just kind of the, the main path there with the gray pieces uh, is really nice, especially when you're giving that kind of crumbled, broken up look. Yeah, I got to remember that one. Here's a, the Last of Us build, which has inspired some amazing kind of post-apocalypse type architecture like this. Just incredible builds. I love the tiny house back there. Tow, tow around your tiny house. Yeah, on the trailer. <laughs> and then you got a Venus flytrap. Reminds me of Audrey 2 from uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Nice little Avatar, The Last Airbender build. Some smaller Star Wars. Pokeball. There's uh, some, I think we're getting a little bit of a section of military stuff. So you've got kind of some tanks coming ashore. Flamethrower got the Battle of San Juan Hill. So this isn't a battle you see, uh, you know, depicted very often with Lego, but nice to see a different take. And then all the tanks and vehicles up there, military, World War II era stuff. And some big AT-AT walkers. A few other Hailfire, Hailfire droids, tri-droids. Lots of fantastic Star Wars builds here. So I think that finishes the Rebel Lug Area Force. So we'll keep moving down here then. And it looks like we have some of the builders, some of the builders hard at work here. What is this build? Someone knocked the wall down. Oh, that's his. That's it. So it was the Game of Thrones wall till someone knocked it down. Dragon or someone at dinner. When we were at a dinner, they called and said they thought someone bumped our table. Oh no. Or his table, not mine. So are you hoping to have it rebuilt before the public comes in tomorrow? I'll be able to rebuild it. Okay, that's good. Good to hear you can rebuild it. Well, keep up the good work. Looking forward to seeing it finished. I love the ice dragon. It's a really nice, nice looking design. And you got the, what did they just call him, the ice king? Yeah. On, on, the night king, that's right. On top of the ice dragon. That's really cool. 
<laughs> Lots of fantastic work. The castle is looking very good as well. Uh, then some more Star Wars here. So this is a very long kind of Star Wars layout. Lots of minifigs, lots of action, fire. I like the big kind of antenna there in the back. Yeah, good use of uh, the transparent neon orange there. You don't see that very often in Star Wars builds. The little Star Wars mission build, the lost mission of Inferno Squad. Here's, uh, I think, a scene from the Solo movie. Some little ambush scene, Star Killer base. Nice little clone bunker. Uh, small little crate build. We've shown some massive crate builds on the channel over the years. There's a much smaller kind of vignette take on it. The raid on Jakku. Little Kashyyyk build. And then here's a really nice, this is sort of a mosaic type of build, but also just kind of, it's almost like a picture frame. Yeah, it's almost kind of like a brick quilting, right? Where you've got these sort of squares and you use these sort of radial symmetry radiating out from each of those squares. It's nice looking. Little pet daycare there. And we've got some sort of castle scenes. Oh, I think those incorporate into the larger castle over here so they can take those rooms out. Kind of a modular idea. This is really the kind of, one of the kinds of things that I would see in magazines as a kid and, and really wish that I could build and course I didn't have enough brick then and you know now I'm not as into castle as I used to be interested in but I, I would see people build these kinds of things and there were these modular things and I would think like man how could anybody in the world possibly have that much Lego and now you know we're just kind of <laughs> knee deep in it aren't we we are before we started with the pirate islands let's come over and don't miss this uh, displays over here in the corner so this micropolis city it's just crazy the number of buildings here and how much is going on. I love the colors. They've just really let themselves use the color palette here with both the buildings and the cars. Man, look at how populated those streets are. <laughs> Some serious traffic going on. So uh, John Clash, I think, is the builder on that. Uh, great work there. We've got, here's some more uh, space-related, uh, one small step, and then moon base with some crazy greebling on top. Yeah, this, I love this. I love it. All that trans, uh, the transparent neon green, just kind of mixed in there. This, you know, this looks realistic, but it also looks very, you know, science fiction. This is cool. <laughs> awesome work. And some construction, uh, sort of bionicle type builds. We've even got a little Galador in there. Bluetooth with his full armament. <laughs> Here's some uh, some Duplo <laughs> builds. You don't, oh, you don't see that very often. That's great. I'm going to have to take a photo of that. Some of them, my buddies back home will love that. You have done some great things with Duplo over the years, haven't you, Boone? I love Duplo. I don't, I don't, know, if it's, I don't know if I'd say great, but I love it. And, and look at this Fabuland. Is that a – well, is that Fabuland? It's like, the head I is, I, I believe. It's the head yeah. of a Fabuland elephant on a Technic body. And he's driving a motorcycle there. That's really great. I love that kind of stuff. If you want to know what I love, that's it. So if you want to get your attention at a show, build more stuff like that. I, I don't know how to explain it. But, um, you know, if you take a weird figure that they don't make anymore and uh, stick it on something that looks awesome, that's, I think that's, that's kind of my bread and butter. Oh, and look at that Dr. Robotnik back there. Oh, it's the, the Dr. Eggman um, from the from the Sonic, you know, kind of franchise, but they've just done a really excellent job. And I love that his big wild mustache is, are the, um, what are those? They're the wings yeah. from, from like the, the flying monkeys, right? The, the gray wings from the flying monkey minifigure. Uh, that's a really cool look. Yeah, some excellent builds there. Uh, that's why it's important to try to hit everything on the show floor because uh, even stuff in the corner like that is, is really impressive. So this is interesting what they've done with these pirate islands this year because uh, in the past it's always just been kind of the plastic uh, that you could look through. But now they've added all these diamonds on top and it makes it pop much more because the way the light hits it, it adds all this really nice sparkle to it. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. And so then we'll 
keep checking these islands out here and this is this has been like a collab for a number of years uh but like i said they just added you know a little bit more to it that made it more impressive i do like the the parrot island i think that might be a new addition here we've got the uh classic space armies and i think that one in the top left there is the convention kit Correct? Yes, because it's like a space theme this year. So uh, that is, the, you are correct. That is the convention kit. All the, the new colors of classic space minifigs on display. We've got the Apollo launch tower. So I believe that's using the official Lego kit, if I'm not mistaken there. And then here's a very nice town layout. So you've got school, some houses, some shopping furniture store everything is uh very well manicured there yeah that furniture store the design of that building is really nice they've got this thing well lit and uh not only is the building attractive but so is that blue couch in the front window that just pops there's an overwatch build i think you're starting to see more overwatch builds we'll see several more later as uh you know lego's official overwatch line was released so you're getting minifigs and that sort of thing and a lot more Overwatch themed builds are coming out. Uh, you've got the HMS Intrepid, some pirate builds, uh, nice 50th anniversary of the moon landing. Again, since uh, space is the theme, I think that's why you're seeing a lot of, you got the anniversary and you've seen a lot of those space builds. Nice castle. And then here is, I think, a Doctor Strange inspired kind of mirror dimension build. I love how they've made this street look like it's bending. And they've incorporated, you know, kind of some buildings that are smaller in between some buildings that are wider. And uh, really is a nice effect. Yeah, Doctor Strange captured that type of effect very, very nicely. Here we've got some on Brickway. So this is like, uh, I guess, famous Broadway scenes uh, built out of Lego. I love the, the barricade from Les Mis there. All the Lego pieces piled up in front. And then in Tesla Model X. Lots of stuff going on there. Got a North Pole workshop. All the elves hard at work. Yeah, look at the uh, the fire engine. I love they've got a classic spaceship that they're cranking out there, a boat, a fire engine, and a train. This is really fun. This is Ole Kirk Christensen's house now next to that. So this is the house that is still there today. So if you go to Bill End, you can see this see this house. Uh, I think part of it has been turned into a museum. Uh, so if you kind of go through uh, the museum there, you can see, see some of that. And they also, at one point, I guess the 2012 employee Christmas gift set here, as the sign says, was the, was the house set. And then next to that is Bob Carney's uh, castle. So uh, if you've seen our videos in the past, Bob Carney is just like a legend in the Lego castle community. He's been building for uh, a number like decades of castle builds and I don't even know what number of castle this is but he always does crazy awesome massive models uh, and this one certainly doesn't disappoint uh, with the, the outside walls and then as it builds up to the the main kind of keep area there and everything it's just really impressive work and even the the minifigs he's incorporated in look great so uh, his work is is just always a really a treat to look at here is uh, the story of the sixth friend. Uh, so this is how the sixth Lego friend came to, to join the friend's world. And they've got all this different information. They were telling the whole story with the builds. <laughs> this is good. This is good. <laughs> I like it when people take their build and, and, you know, use some other media to bring it into the real world or to add, you know, an extra bit of story. And so the, the work they've done on these explanations and the graphics, this is fun stuff. Now we'll cross the aisle here and start in with uh, the next section over here. And we've got kind of a train town layout. The Ferris wheel, some nice trains here. The yellow submarine train. <laughs> you don't see a lot of yellow submarine trains, do you? <laughs> Hello. And then uh, K-Lug, so this is the Kenosha, Wisconsin lug. Uh, they've had a presence at Brickworld for many, many years. Uh, some a fantastic work here with the town city layout. The Apple store is always really cool. I love Jameson Guy and Pan's work here, uh, the orrery, uh, which is kind of the planetarium and observatory here. 
uh, in, in their town and so many moving parts going on in there. Yeah, so you've got the Earth orbiting the sun, the Earth rotating, the moon orbiting the Earth. It's, it's unbelievable. Incorporated some of the Lego Ideas sets in there. And then down next to that, we've got the Kenosha train station. And a little toy store. And then if you come down, you start to get to the harbor area, kind of the docks, and the, the very nice lighthouse. Great techniques there. Here's a nice building, uh, then some Blade Runner uh, brick heads. So some of the iconic Blade Runner characters with even like a micro kind of architecture city skyline build of Blade Runner. And we got a Batman the Animated Series mosaic. Still, you know, regarded as one of the best, you know, Batman creations of all time. A lot of fans. Nice little French farmhouse in like 1940. I like the the gentle curve there in that build just adds really nice texture and like 3D popping effect. The Wasteland Monocycle. Man, what a cool thing they've created here. Looks like it's you know rolling along. <laughs> I've seen images, you know, kind of concept art in it, images of this kind of thing online, and they've just done a really exceptional job executing this thing with the motion. Down here we've got this great uh, Star Wars ship kind of uh, overgrown. That's a really nice effect. You don't see a lot of those types of builds where it's all kind of overgrown and everything, but I think that's pretty cool. And then some more little street scene, building scenes. Star Wars mosaic and then here's a build and a layout that I think has had uh, this is kind of variation of this has been here a number of years uh, with the the music videos going this is the space station of doom and then you've got all sorts of different scenes and rooms and vignettes around it so uh, a couple here's one with green screen and Star Wars down at the bottom uh, another one using very nice large use of green screen is the space one over here <laughs> I think that's pretty good uh, the kind of like fireplace effect there in that room is very nice. But there's so much going on here. You've even got like a Willy Wonka type of layout there with all sorts of figs in it. Yeah, and then uh, with Scooby-Doo, the Scooby-Doo gang over here on the... Oh, and even Indiana Jones up there. So it's kind of taking Star Wars and just incorporating it into a lot of different areas. So here is some more large uh, spaceships and shuttles. A Saturn, Saturn V here is kind of the, the main part of this layout, the crawler transporter. This is done by John Wolfe, who's done some incredible builds over the years. This is really excellent work. And again, kind of in the, the K-Lug area, here's the monorail station. The trans blue is very nice with the, the bright white and just all those colors there. Yeah, this is cool. They just got a whole lot of those, you know, big sort of curved panels and used them in a nice, attractive way. There's some more of those lenticular mosaics we mentioned earlier. And then a series of the signs of the Zodiac. And they use like a kind of white studs and string to display them all there. We got Marvin the Martian with some really cool backlighting. It really makes that pop. Um, nice little mech there in a drop ship and then Moss Eisley very large build here the whole bunch of different details lots of minifigs lots going on this is a really good Moss Eisley I can just imagine you know coming in with a, a nice photo photography camera and being able to take some really good stills you know sort of immersed in the city of Moss Eisley you could use it to tell a whole story Rogue One there. I love this little Hope build. Uh, that's really, really fantastic. With R2-D2 and Princess Leia. 
And then Hoth. Uh, Hoth has always lent itself to some big, incredible layouts. This one, I like instead of just the flat white like a lot of builders do, they actually went for kind of mountains and added a, a lot of texture to it. Yeah, it's good. And even, you know, just laying down those round one-by-ones just kind of sprinkled all over, it's, it's, a, it's a different and refreshing texture on the surface of Hoth. And the snow speeder flying around on a train track, pretty brilliant. Yeah, the movement incorporated into these big layouts is always very important and adds a lot to it. So here's some more of the kind of train town layout that we saw a little bit earlier. So you can, there's even different spots here for, to get the public involved and you can push down on these and flip the switches and things to, to try them out. Let's see what happens, Boone. Oh, I just switched the direction of the, oh, that looked kind of dangerous. Maybe I should stop it and then we can switch the direction. There we go. Very good. So it's great when you have these exhibits that the public can sort of get involved in and feel like they're kind of part of the display and control the action a little bit of what's going on. Can operate the carousel. Oh, there it's going backward. And there it's going forward. <laughs> Perfect. And then we'll turn around here and start in with uh, some more uh, you know, Whistlug area builds here. Got a nice Joker build, some Pokemon. Here is, uh, this is like a DC Marvel mashup with uh, Iron Man and Batman and then Spider-Man and Robin in the background. Yeah, that's interesting. So it's a mirror, Bruce Wayne looking in the mirror and seeing on the other side of the mirror is Tony Stark. That's funny. So it's kind of this alternate reality. You've got the mentor and the mentee because you've got Robin and Spider-Man looking on. The contrast of Batman suits with Iron Man's, uh, I think that's pretty cool. And then Unikitty's Cloud Castle. This uh, Larry the Lawnmower is pretty fantastic. I always love when builders use the sort of mirrored surface like that underneath. I think it just adds, I mean, it lets you see the details on the bottom and it also just kind of adds to the overall look of it. Oh yeah, he's actually got rotors down there that would cut the grass. That's fun. You wouldn't be able to see that if it weren't for the mirror. Exactly. This build, Emmett's kitchen up here is just fantastic uh, with the tiled floor the oven, the fridge, everything in there. I love seeing like super detailed like house room scenes like that that just capture so much of kind of everyday life in a scene like that. And then up here we've got Sam's garage. So again, using some of the mirror techniques to see inside some of the rooms and then also just kind of paneling that flips out so you can really add those indoor details. Here we have another uh, massive spaceship. This is the Starliner, and it looks like it's heading into a nice little almost portal type of thing there. And then some more smaller spaceships. They use these nice uh, drop cloth type of things to add to the effect. Yeah, I imagine you could probably find that kind of thing at your local craft store. Anywhere you can find fabric. It looks to me like that's what they did. Good idea. This one here is almost all these like grill type of pieces, which is pretty crazy. Here we've got a futuristic battle scene. So it's like Star Wars, most, mostly Star Wars inspired it looks like. And fire. Got the got Duplo screwdriver piece there as the, the thing putting out the water. I think that's actually a new um, fire. Oh, is it? Okay. Like a fire water squirting thing. Like a new kind of play feature. There we go. It shows how much I follow the Duplo line. <laughs> it's a chocolate room. Woody and Buzz. And then nice little like church build. Some more houses. Seems to be all kind of in the similar theme. The church, the house and then kind of a main, almost like town hall type building. And then here's a, a big vehicle, I think from the Mars mission theme, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, you know, I don't feel like I see a whole lot of mocks built in this theme, but it's a great looking color scheme. They did a good job with this. You really don't, but I, there was a lot of cool sets in that theme and 
uh, I definitely played it. That was kind of that theme kind of came out in my Lego Prime age and had a lot of those sets. Next to that is the command tank up there. Very different color scheme, uh, much more intimidating looking. It almost looks like a giant beetle. <laughs> uh, down here we've got the Minecraft world, so several different layers all the way, well below ground, all the way to the top there. Uh, the art desk, I love this, uh, with you know the brick built art and the utensils and everything, all of that uh, brick built there. Even even the phone. I mean that pencil looks almost looks like a real pencil. And then some spaces, so kind of, again, nice little rooms. Up above that, we have a uh, nice beach scene uh, with a lot going on. The, it's like a lot of cheese slopes used for the sand, and so it really gives a very textured feeling. Here you see some more Seasons. So Seasons, I believe, was the theme last year here at Brickworld, so you see some of these builds uh, that are left over from that. Swedish restaurant in the back. And then this is really great. This is uh, so like a pyramid scene, scene and then like a uh, kind of scene in Mexico, like a Mexican city around it. And so you get kind of the classic looking uh, temple up there, pyramid. I think that's really cool, especially with the, the green heads coming out of it. Here we have a cutaway of a nice spaceship, and so this is allows you to see inside. Usually the spaceships are just kind of all the, out, the outside detail, and you don't actually see a lot inside, but here you can see everything going on. This is great. I really love what this builder has done, especially, you know, just kind of all those hoses and the detail, and then you've got this bridge over here where all the minifigures are sitting down doing their job and the mess hall down where they're eating. This is good stuff. And then... Down here we've got the Spider-Verse, and so you've got the subway underneath the ground, uh, and then you go up to the Daily Bugle. You've even got different scales of Spider-Man there uh, incorporated into the build. Lots of villains, lots of action going on. Yeah, I forgot that there was a Spider-Man in that sort of Jack Stone uh, scale. That's far out. Most people have tried to forget Jack Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow Brick Road, and... Uh, Really nice, nicely well done treehouse uh, with both the trees around it and then the main treehouse itself. They've got the sort of droid arms for the roof up there, which just add a lot of little detail to it. And then a uh, Lego bowling alley. And I love the, the smooth looking lanes, but as well just all of the characters and everything, all the action happening in the back. And the wall says, hey. Exactly right. It looks like they have real photos here, so based off of a real place. And then we've got the Mega Unikitties. So you've got the smaller Unikitties in the middle and then a couple much larger models. And that finishes out this section, so we'll keep moving down here uh, to the Brick Safari banners. So if you notice these giant banners around the room, those are kind of the main sponsors of Brick World, so they put up these banners. Uh, this one is actually advertising uh, Brookfield, Brookfield Zoo here in Chicago, has a new Lego exhibit at it. So this is a very large kind of Lego Armada layout along with kind of a beach landing. You've got the, the soldiers going ashore and assaulting the fort there. And then lots of really great ships. So the ships are generally the same style on each side, but I love this Imperial uh, ship ships and that sort of thing. And you've got a very unique one in the back there. Leopard print sails. <laughs> Like maybe some uh, some Chima characters or something like that, joining the fray. <laughs> but yeah, all the the classic kind of cross cannon barrel sails on some of these, and then the blue stripes. Really fantastic. As they're going down the line, and then the the alien UFO coming in as well. And then we keep going down here. We've got the nice i think a disney themed house so you can see some of the disney characters out front and then some modular buildings so you've got chilies uh, next to the ace brickman private detective and then the bricks and minifigs uh right next door to that so bricks and minifigs uh for people who haven't been in them lego stores throughout the country sell lots of great products faded legoland california truck there but still running 
with some more fantastic modular buildings all along here. Looks like we've got some late night builders hard at work here. What, what are you setting up? Uh, I'm doing the War of the Themes. There's uh, So it's like uh, Star Wars versus Lego City, that sort of thing. <laughs> and then in between we have Marvel versus DC over here. So yeah. Um, there's the city area, so I'm going to have the police station there, and that's sort of like a military base, essentially, and then I still have the bank and one other office building, and then over here I have, like, the crossing between the two, and then we have, um, this is actually, my aunt gave this to me, it's, uh, what's left of the Fort Lego, Lego Rado from, like, a thousand years ago, and then, uh, we have the Star Wars area, we have the ATST. I sort of blended the two uh, Galactic Civil War with uh, Clone Wars, so yeah. A lot of different storylines going on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and then I built this uh, Brick Bros UK. They have a video on how to build that, which is really cool. You just take a, one of these, or two of these, and then you make that using the video tutorial. And then I have some Halo, which aren't supposed to be Halo, and then I have... Uh, some foreign Legos from, uh, yeah, I needed a cut down in price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is like a collection over like five years, so. Well, I love the creativity and the blending of themes, so thank you. I hope the rest of the setup goes well. Next to that is a massive roller coaster. This is built by Calvin Hartley, whose work we featured over the years here at Brick World. And this is amazing because of the, the drop off here, uh, right in this section is just pretty insane. So we were watching him running this earlier, and I think it was a bit of a struggle getting down uh, successfully and through the loop, but uh, this thing is just pretty crazy. It takes quite a while to just get up the, the main stretch there. Here's Fort Island. So you've got uh, exactly what the mock card says. It's a fort on an island, and then you do have the, the pirate ships attacking as well, but all kind of built in the same style with the brown pieces. Here's the outskirts of San Lo, and so this is a nice World War II scene. Um, you've got some of the, the Americans and the Germans battling it out there. And then this is, I believe, a Lego Ideas project. This is an automated garbage truck, and so you can see uh, some of the different models they have here, and then a, they've got the video showing how it works. And some of, I think this is kind of their example design right there. So if you want to check that, if you think that looks like a cool idea, check that out on LEGO Ideas for sure, the automated garbage truck project on LEGO Ideas. Down here is a dolphin aquarium. Uh, inside there, they've got this blue light that just adds an awesome underwater effect and really brings that build to life. Uh, as the crowd's all watching on and the dolphins are jumping out, and it gives that really nice water effect. And then out front... You've got some large animal sculptures, soccer field, lots of uh, kids having fun playing around. Here's Camo Man. So in Lego, uh, this is considered camo. You've got all the different pieces represented, uh, kind of a rainbow warrior type of effect. It's the Jurassic Park front gate with Jeep. So uh, you sort of see, uh, the, sort of like the current, uh, the Lego set that was just released recently. We got the Disneyland monorails. I think three different versions of the Disneyland monorails, uh, which the, I love the the contrasting colors there. And then Frank Lloyd Wright's uh, Falling Water is very nice as well. Number of more uh, space builds and kind of space history related builds. Uh, even got the X-15 here, NASA, U.S. Air Force. So this was built uh, by Brickmania, designed by Brickmania. And then another, uh, I'm not sure how many Saturn V uh, launch builds we've seen, but uh, there's a number of them at the show this year. Here is Once in a Blue Moon Revisited by Casey Ross. And so she is known for her sort of mollusk snail builds. And so you see these crazy blue base plates that she's incorporated, which you don't see these base plates very often in builds. And uh, this is really fantastic. The monorail's even running right now. And I think we have... KC right here. If you Do you want to share a couple details about the layout here? Uh, yeah, sure. Because um, the theme this year is the moon and beyond, and this is once in a blue moon, which once in a blue moon means not very often, but it's also a blue moon, and how often do you see snails in space, especially giant pink flying snails? 
Not very often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love monorail, so I figured this was a great way to show it off. And then talk about where you got some of these blue base plates from, because you don't see these in, incorporated into builds. They're from very old underwater sets. They're, they're listed as a play mat, and they are Lego. And the picture frame is an old Clickets picture frame, and it actually lights up. But it's on a timer, so it doesn't stay lit when I turn it on. <laughs> really? Yeah, but I love some of the rare stuff you've incorporated in here, so that's a, that's a really unique layout. Thank you. And then what do we have behind you here? Um, well, this is a, a size chart of the different sizes of bricks that LEGO produced. The Modulex one isn't here right this second because I was using it in my presentation and I have to put it back. <laughs> but um, it's every size that was ever produced for the public. What are some of the rarer sizes here, would you say, that maybe you don't see very often? Um, these are jumbo bricks. These are pre-duplo. They only come in two by fours and they only come in four colors and they have almost no clutch. You can see it. it it doesn't clutch. This is Quattro, and it works with Duplo and Lego. It's, it's an exact step up. Whereas Jumbo Brick and Educational Foam Bricks don't work with the other ones. Okay, so you, kind of depending on the size and everything, it's kind of their separate lines or whether they incorporate in. Yeah. Okay, well thank you. Thanks for sharing with us. I appreciate it. And we'll come around the corner here and check out this uh, build. So this is kind of like a gingerbread house city or a whole, whole street of gingerbread buildings, uh, which is something you don't see real often, but is a, is a really unique idea, especially with all the colors you can incorporate into there. So uh, the roof techniques, uh, I love the, the tiles, kind of the diamond design on top of there, and then the round tiles on this building. Some really fantastic stuff. And... Then some Lego Sudoku. And coming down, we've got the, this is the University of Dayton Immaculate Conception Chapel. Lego Orrery. Here we have, <laughs> these builds turned on just perfect timing as we were walking by. I don't know how that would happen to be, but you know, <laughs> that worked out nicely. <laughs> so these are some <laughs> fantastic builds here. I think we even have the, the builder back there. So what is that you're working on there? Punk representation of uh, an old Japanese anime called Battle of the Planets. This was uh, the ship called the Phoenix, where you'd have uh, pods with many vehicles coming out of pods here and pods here. Mine's storms controlled or NXT controlled for all the motors, uh, contra rotating props in the front and the rear. Hopefully, done by public. Wow. Well, that is that is quite impressive. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck with that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Down next to those builds, we've got the uh, Pro 2 Nitro Race Team, the Pinto. Here's a Pro Mod 4 Racer. You'll notice, uh, if you've noticed some of these these red bricks here, which are uh, Brick World trophies. So this, this one actually is from this year, and it won first place for the Baja Off-Road Challenge. And so some, some builders will display past trophies and then some of them uh, will be set out from this year as well. It's another kind of collaborative Minecraft layout with a bunch of different layers here uh, and rooms and scenes from Minecraft. And then next to that, it looks like we've got some, some work in progress. There's always builders working on stuff uh, you know, throughout the show. It's, it's not just people showing up with everything finished. There's always new stuff being built and then nice trees there here's a hello neighbor build so we featured this in the past you can look uh, on the channel for a much more in-depth video on this uh, this is really fantastic build uh, so many cool you know angles and details and the way they were able to stack the different rooms of the house on there is really fantastic so look for that more detailed video there's a nice baseball diamond with a lot of stuff going on around it. You've got all the different characters in the stands, food trucks, the parking lot, lots of stuff going on. And then this is the Cosmic Clash Captain Fear ship. Coming down, you've got some more space-related builds. Love some of the smaller vehicles here. And then this is another kind of uh, moonscape almost uh, with different scenes happening. You can got some dinosaurs over there and different Lego sets incorporated in. And then an underwater scene 
with the Saturn V. And then uh, Simpsons House inspired layout here, I think. So got all the, the yard build up around the Simpsons. And now we're back to the, the big Armada uh, battle that we showed earlier. So we'll switch then over to the next section here. And so this next to me right here is actually uh, the GBC layout. And so as regular viewers will know, we always do our best to cover the GBC in depth. So we'll have a separate video showing this whole thing as it's running and everything. But there is some uh, builds in the back here. So we'll go back there actually and cover those uh, before we continue on just to make sure we don't miss anything for you. So uh, you can get a quick look at uh, the GBC when it's not running, but we'll definitely have a much more in-depth video when uh, this is all up and running. I believe there's more than 300 modules this year, which makes it a world record. So it's pretty crazy. There's a, there's a lot of stuff going on there. So this layout back here is a variety of different types of builds. Uh, these are all kind of smaller Star Wars scenes here. I love this one that incorporated the Brickworld event kit with the wrecked ship. And then here's a really fantastic layout. Is this yours here? This is mine. This is uh, Minban from, based on the planet from Star Wars The Solo Story. Kind of put my own story to it. This is post Return of the Jedi. Kind of still working on a little bit, a couple patches left. Well, this is fantastic work. I love the, the landscaping you did here yeah, and then all the, all the minifigs you were able to incorporate in the, all the, the whole scene. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, hopefully it all comes together for you so, finally. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. And is this yours here? Yeah, so this is a, a diorama depicting the, the Warsaw Uprising in 1944, which is when uh, Poland revolted against the Nazi rule. So yeah, uh, this is depicting a, a group of Nazis, n Germans, uh, running through and attacking the, uh, the resistors. And you can see that I have the barricade here, the bombed out city as during the resistance, Germany would bomb out all the buildings. And you can see that through all the, and the wall is here as well. And yeah. Great work, well thank you. That's a, a unique scene to build there, so thank you. And then we come around here and we've got Star Wars through the years. And so this kind of tells uh, the story of all the different Star Wars movies uh, in each scene throughout the years. And coming around the corner, here's a dismal island layout. So this is a very different take on the pirate uh, theme, pirate islands. Uh, this is all black and white, some gray incorporated in there. Uh, uses the, the black kind of palm tree pieces and... Uh, just a very unique take on that whole thing. I think it's even got the, the gray steering wheel there. Which, uh, might have come in the, the Disney Steamboat Willie set. And some more Star Wars scenes. You got Mustafar, the Yavin Award Ceremony up there. Some uh, This pool is very nice. I love all the, all the tiling around the pool. It gives it a re uh, very smooth looking effect. And then uh, the, using the blue studs in the middle there, you can even see kind of the lane markers. So that came together very, very nicely. This is the Ministry for the Advancement of Space Travel. And so you've got the train running around, the big, the big tower, and all the really nice buildings in the background. I like that. It seems very sort of Harry Potter inspired. Over here is a uh, new Asgard. So uh, from Avengers Endgame, this is fantastic. I think this is uh, one of the the cooler scenes uh, in the movie when uh, you see Hulk riding into uh, new Asgard on the truck there as the, the back of the truck is weighed down. I love this scene in the movie. So that's a, a really fantastic take on it. Good job there, Andrew. And then here is... What might be the most Lego fire pieces ever packed into one spot to build. That's pretty insane. Tons of stuff there. So some really fantastic work from the builders there. We'll come over to this section then and start off with this mosaic of Bill Murray, American scientist, a Bill Murray tribute. And then next to that, uh, this is an amazing, this is Grid 32 Unintended Bounty, and it looks like there's kind of aliens and then the uh, very well-protected humans with all their weapons uh, kind of fighting it out here. But I love the center area, especially there. 
uh, with the orange and gray and then kind of the trans blue, trans purple pieces creating the, the moon base. I think that's a really fantastic look. And then I, the vending machine in there. <laughs> so small little details like that that really just add some life to the build. Here's Prince Philip versus Maleficent. The purple and black is always really nice. The Golden Sword Temple and Time Machine. And a tiny Star Wars trench run there. One of the smaller trench runs you'll see. Uh, Batman with the nice light up eyes in the back. And then the Lego Movie Batwing. Those wings are, are very impressive. Coming around here, you've got kind of a city pizza layout corner sports store and micro castle you got a costume shop so these are smaller little scenes the queen's garden i like just simple but you know captures the the flower beds and the pathways very nicely love the obsidian build there and you've got the builder's instagram account if you want to scan the qr code here's some very nice spaceships the Galactic Mineral Lab, and so here you can see them examining all the different minerals coming through the lab. NASA's Juno Satellite, and the Seaport Market. And I love how the, the builder chose to kind of build the, the base around the whole market there and really set the scene very nicely. And then a game room, you've got pizza, Mountain Dew, all the staples of the game room. It's a massive steam vessel. It's like the wings... I don't know if they actually move, but uh, built the large wings there with the chains. Very nicely done road spaces here that uh, some nice kind of tiling and studs not on top building, sideways building, incorporated with the, the main architecture buildings itself, which it blends different colors really nicely. The pink, this building here with the blue and red and tan and black and kind of dark green colors all together. It's really cool. It's the Jingle Bells Church. I like the Brickworld 2017 minifig represented there. Uh, then over here you've got kind of superhero battles, lots of different characters going at it. And uh, yeah, the, the tile work there around the fountain is really nice, kind of a city park. Got some more builders hard at work. What, what are you guys working on? Yeah. Just literally nothing, just kind of <laughs> whatever you've got in front of you, you're just messing with it. <laughs> that works. You know, that's the fun of, uh, of Brickworld, isn't it? You can just hang out and work on nothing. <laughs> well, have a, have a nice rest of the night. <laughs> and then get the armored train there. And uh, 2015 Chevy Corvette. A couple of different Corvettes here. The Dodge Challenger is from the Houston Brick Club, 1989 classic Batmobile. And back to the Future DeLorean with some incredible lighting effects there. One of the, one of the most kind of fleshed out, nice looking DeLoreans I've seen. Zombie apocalypse border fight. So this is <laughs> the, the U.S. Canadian border here. This is pretty good. Uh, so you've got the zombies... Uh, you know, taking over both sides of the borders, everything's run down, and uh, all the everyone's fighting for them for their lives. Everyone who's still alive. Over here, we've got the Battle of Wakanda, so another nice Avengers-themed build. All of the kind of iconic characters represented there, and then down here, a mix of builds. You got the nice uh, Beatles mosaic in the back. And then ancient Egypt, which is uh, really cool. I love that you know, you've got kind of the, the Nile scene with the, the small boat there, the Sphinx, and kind of capturing sort of all in one scene, kind of iconic uh, Egyptian architecture and statues. The vintage Dairy Queen here. So for anyone who is old enough to remember the kind of original Dairy Queen designs, you might recognize that. Spaceship in a bottle. Obviously, a nice little take on the ship in the bottle, uh, Jake Sadovich's original design. And then the 1930s gangster street scene, which is just awesome. It captures that era of architecture so nicely. The grocery and meat shop, kind of the bakery, the fire truck and the fire station. 
the police vehicle chasing the uh, gangsters there. Really fantastic. That finishes up that section, so we'll keep moving down here and see what else we can have to show you here. So here is a whole, I think this whole series of tables is done by Dave Coletta. So this, the start is his alphabet starfighters, which are really neat. And so you've got T and L and Y and S and R and G and all the, all the different letters. And he's just incorporated so many techniques and colors and parts into these that it's really unique. And for this next series, we'll actually start at the very end here and then make our way back because it's really cool. This is a life in bricks, and so this is Dave Coletta kind of doing an autobiographical Lego project, as he calls it. So there's uh, the uh, manor, or the house in the background, and then he starts here with kind of the first date with his wife, and then uh, the Lego room here. Uh, there's the, the house scene, then you've got the cake topper. Here's summer at the, the water, then you've got the baby shower. And coming in here after the, the baby is born with the sleep regression. And then uh, first steps and uh, playing with the child. So I think this is a really, really unique, uh, neat idea to do with Lego where you kind of tell, tell your life story through bricks and these different scenes uh, of, of your life. And I think Dave has just captured these so perfectly. So many fantastic details. As I mentioned earlier, I, I do really enjoy seeing kind of nicely detailed home interior scenes, you know, rooms and that sort of thing. And I think he's done a great job of it. We'll come down here and check out this, which is a classic space inspired uh, layout. Now, this build right here, I think is uh, really cool with the all the trans clear parts, uh, blue, yellow, and uh, clear pieces to kind of make the onion dome type of effect. Uh, then the purple trees, very cool and all of the the rest of the scenery around here with some of the classic spaceships and everything then you've got the corvette garage and the uh, bill cipher mosaic kind of inspired maybe by some black tron there here is the crescent limited a uh, very large train and then the some more Southern Railway uh, trains here. So I love the green color on that. It's laid out very nicely. The Joyo Theater. And then this is, uh, I think that some of these builders are from uh, the Lincoln, uh, Omaha, you know, type of area. So you see the Nebraska Brick Days, another Lego show. This is Nathan Flood's build, which is fantastic. Uh, it tells the, the story of the SS uh, city of Cairo, which uh, I believe was sunk by a uh, German U-boat here. And, and you see the ship sinking in the background with the U-boat. So fantastic, fantastic build. And then we have some really nice mosaics here. So... This is the, the Atari uh, kind of logo there in the back. I think it's really cool. Dig Dug. So you get some of the classic video games going on. Some of these builds. Uh, yeah, Pitfall. And then over here you've got Breakout. And Galaga. Galaga one is uh, just super iconic. I love that. Uh, that's one of my favorites there for sure. Here's uh, Adventure, the first ever Easter egg. So I think this is the first time an Easter egg was incorporated into a video game. Uh, again, a lenticular take on Pac-Man. So Mr. and Mrs. Pac-Man, uh, depending on which way you look at this. And then up above you got Centipede there. Here is uh, Combat with a Twist. And so you get these great, the blue and red tanks all the kind of obstacles and hedgerows type of stuff to, to hide around there. Uh, these couple of builds here I think are fantastic, particularly the Roman Centurion uh, with the shield there I think is, is really neat and using those small treads uh, for kind of the belt around the, the chest. Here's the boxer, so it's uh, <laughs> Amazon box uh, as a boxer. 
and, and I love the the bionicle scene there is really nice I, I love how uh, they incorporated you know the whole water beach tree scene and everything along with the character it's uh, Razor really fantastic especially on the head kind of face design there and the Carolingian sword, Allosaurus, the mobile artillery platform, which is quite an intimidating looking vehicle. Then you've got a uh, Mustang to the left here and a mechanic shop. And then the Pontiac and the Lamborghini as well. Then the Agora, which is in uh, Spain, so that's a very unique looking building. This builder captured that well, you can see in the photo. I love that. It's a Battlestar Galactica inspired build. And several more space history, space race inspired builds. And then a Svenguli build. Nice mosaic there. I love the the kind of dripping effect. Uh, SpaceX automated drone trip ship. And then the SpaceX Heavy Falcon. A couple of different takes on the SpaceX Heavy Falcon builds here. Uh, then some nice little brick heads up front. And a crazy neoclassic space uh, space camp build in the back there. And then we come to what is the Menger Sponge, which I'm not entirely sure what this is, but uh, it appeared there's a long description here, uh, something to do with uh, mathematics. It's a fractural curve. So it looks like there's also incorporated like the uh, small Star Trek uh, ship in there as well, sort of. Then out here, you got some nice housing. Guy mowing his lawn. Uh, one interesting thing I think these builders have done here is they've. Uh, so this is for Low Lug, uh, the builders who did this. A lot of them have created these cards here, and so they're kind of like collectibles almost. If you enjoy the build, you can collect the cards from the Low Lug members. This is the Snowflake Fractal here. So it starts out kind of solid on the base and, uh, you know, kind of gets m more and more fractured as you go up. He's got no two rings in the center model are attached in this one. So you see some more of these kind of mathematical models using Lego for these ideas. Here's uh, the Blaze Center Water and Power. And not something you see uh, depicted with Lego very often, but the the power station there is pretty cool with all the different wires. Well, and I love the uh, Ferris Bueller <laughs> reference, Save Ferris on the Water Tower, which I believe that is a Chicago-based film. You're right? correct, yeah. It's kind of one of the iconic films in Chicago, so that's a very nice uh, reference there since we are at Brickworld Chicago this year. Uh, 60 Years uh, Lego Cake, the, the dynamite pieces, I think, are a very nice touch on that one <laughs> for the candles. Uh, and then drink Pepsi Cola. So this is fantastic. Even those bottles with like sort of custom decals on there are really great. And then sighting the Death Star here. So this is one I think you definitely have to stand a ways back. Like most Lego mosaics, they get better kind of the further further away you stand. Definitely one of the longtime classic images from Star Wars. And we'll keep moving down this way. Finished with that section. And as you can see, let's see where the, the room's kind of split in half with the vendors this year. So uh, we're just about done with the first half of the room. Now we come to some fantastic builds here. Uh, we actually have the builder back here uh, uh, working on some stuff. So how are, how are you doing, Rocco? Doing pretty, doing pretty well. <laughs> awesome. So do you want to give us a quick overview of what you have here? Sure. So I just brought the past year's worth of new stuff and I guess the highlights are Notre Dame in Paris and Mount Rushmore. Yeah, these are some fantastic uh, new models here. This is just some really incredible stuff. So what's your favorite part of the this Mount Rushmore build? 
Uh, it's, you know, it's all about the details and well, where I started with it were the faces because I knew that was the make or break. So I think the eyes are, once I figured that out, I knew I was onto something. Great work. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you guys. So there's the newest models and then you can see a few other examples of Rocco's work here as well that uh, he's brought out to Chicago. Uh, just always taking to the next level there. I love that Transamerica pyramid building. That's just always been one of one of my favorite buildings. I don't know why. It's just so unlike anything else. And I mean, Rocco, do you know what year that was uh, designed and built in real life? In the, 70s. in the 70s. Yeah. So just, I mean, if you think back to the 70s and then of course, you know, the Chrysler building. Rocco, you did such a good job with those. <laughs> Keep up the great work. Thank you. <laughs> So here's some more fantastic uh, mosaics. These are both done by Sharon Vance, and she's brought some just next-level, incredible mosaics to Brickworld shows over the years. Uh, this one particularly here with the dinosaurs on it I think is really incredible, uh, creating so much kind of action and life in one scene, even the lighting and kind of the meteor coming down there. Yeah, and the depth, right? So there's multiple levels of mosaic here, and the, the dinosaurs actually come you know out of the image just a bit and it gives it just that extra little pop here's a nice owl mosaic let's not become an endangered species good advice for any species <laughs> just in general uh waiting for dunkirk so i think that's a cool little scene capturing some of the troops there operation cobra operation dragoon and then shield versus hydra mosaic with the nice lenticular effect. And then this is uh, Memorial Park. So you can see all the flowers laid out there. It's very impressive. Down here is a build by uh, Brian Williams. And so Brian Williams has built some incredible stuff over the years here at Brickworld. This is his latest build from the Indiana Jones movies, which is a lot. what's inspired a lot of his builds. And it's the Bantu Wind, uh, which is the steamer in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And he's, you can even see kind of what he did here. He built this on top of these uh, Technic uh, pieces in order to make the kind of water movement go. Yeah, and all of those little, uh, what are those, two-by-two two sl curved slopes, they're attached together by net netting, you know, elements. Yeah, so it's always great to see what Brian brings out to shows. Really fantastic work. Down here we've got Texas Brick Railroad and just a whole bunch of incredible train models. So, I mean, right here you just have represented some of the the most impressive trains and train builders uh, you know, at the show right here with all of these different models. There's a lot to take in. I particularly like the, uh, the one John was just showing there with the gray with kind of the blue accents on and it. That's the shield logo, right? <laughs> I love what they've done with that front end of that engine. Man, those, I'm pretty, I think those are upside down, right? Those, uh, those arch pieces. I think so, be. yeah. And that's a Tony Sava build, and he built actually a whole bunch of these right here at the end. Uh, just a bunch of these incredible builds. I think he, he comes up from Texas for the show and uh, is really just incredible. Here's uh, a builder. This builder of, of this, the blue train here, actually came all the way from Australia. So uh, he traveled quite some distance to make it to the show, but glad he was able to bring that out. And then a few more trains, locomotives here. That is one long Union Pacific engine there. This one has some uh, very precious cargo strapped on with some Lego <laughs> chains. <laughs> this is just a simple scene of two Technic characters <laughs> finding it out on the table. Here is several builds by Riley, and we featured his work, uh, I think, just about every year he's been coming to Brickworld, and it's been really amazing to see how much he's improved over the years uh, with some of his buildings, particularly when you look at these larger buildings down here, like his CN Tower and uh, the Golden Finance Center, and then actually another take on the Transamerica Pyramid that uh, we were talking about earlier. Yeah, these are really something. I think this uh, Golden Finance Center might be my favorite of the three. Really nice. It's 78 inches tall, so quite some impressive models there. 
Come down here, you can see we've got the, the vendors to the left, like I mentioned earlier, kind of in the middle of the room. And then a couple more sections uh, in this half of the display hall. So we can start right here uh, with uh, some large, this is kind of a whole long train layout, city layout, lots of different buildings uh, incorporated into this whole area. And you can see kind of the trestle bridge uh, that crosses the water where the trains can go over. Uh, here's the Spam Cake Diner. I love that with the the, the dog the spinning. The Duplo, yeah, I think it's a Duplo, <laughs> what is that, Dalmatian puppy. That's nice. <laughs> Thomas the Tank Engine is pretty good here. <laughs> Him pulling all the tanks, that's, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like this yellow Lego engine, just, you know, the kind of little engine you would see on a rail yard, you know, to pull around just a few cars or something. Uh, and I like they've done it in Lego and used some of those, I'm assuming they're authentic stickers. It's neat. The neighborhood trolley here. Oh, <laughs> the neighborhood trolley. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. <laughs> Perfect. The Imperial Sugar Refinery. So this is great lettering for the sign up there. And then the big uh, Imperial Sugar Pure Cane kind of uh, holding areas there. Very nice. And then next to that is the abandoned train factory. So this seems to be more an area for uh, Brick World trophies than anything else. Down here you've got some more. I love the, the Adirondack Scenic Railroad build. And we round the corner here. This uh, big tree kind of weeping willow effect is very nice. That is nice. Yeah, I really enjoy what these train builders do for the realism of their builds, both in the trains and in the scenery. Look at this bridge. Man, that's really something. Even though, like the pylons and the way that, you know, the structural, how you know, structurally strong it looks down at the bottom. That's fantastic. Some different takes on Lego trees, so they don't all kind of use the, the same leaf pieces. You can get different types of trees depending on the pieces you use. This train I just noticed that's going right now is massive. It takes up like a quarter of the track at any one time. Yeah, 12, I think, uh, 12 cars altogether, including the engine, so I guess 11 cars. And here's a uh, model by Brick Model Railroader, and they make some really cool train models. Uh, that they sell at different shows, so uh, really fantastic work there. And here's a big train yard with, again, some incredible examples of different trains. Some more brick model railroader. And there's so many, there's so many options with trains, right? Like, you can go to the in the entire history of the railroad and create a replica, or you can create something completely original, and you've just got this you know, entire world of opportunity just within the one niche of trains. Yeah, it really is incredible what they're able to, to pull out there. And then the big Exchange Bank Lion Oil building here. And then we'll come over to this next section. I think this might be the last section on kind of this half of the room. Uh, we'll start with Reed Yeager's uh, Hope Castle. So this is something that uh, it's far, every year I've been at Brick World, uh, for quite a while at least, this, this castle has been here. And uh, he always changes it up somehow, adds new characters, designs it slightly different. This year there's a massive siege happening out front uh, with some trebuchets that actually work. I was seeing those in action uh, a couple days ago. Very nice work here. And the uh, trans clear pieces he incorporates into, into Hope Castle are always amazing. Then a much more standard castle back here, uh, but with uh, incredible... Um, rock work and landscaping. I love the the different factions. Like it's almost like every medieval faction Lego has created is being represented here. Mm, yeah, that's cool. I I also love the dragons. Man, I love dragons so much. They have all these different iterations of the dragons from Lego over the years. And and uh, you know there were a lot of lovely dragons in the last build. We've seen some dragons. I I want someone to do a whole dragon theme. <laughs> convention one of these years I'd, I would love to participate <laughs> you, you got some builds waiting for that 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> you know me, I have ideas. That's right. <laughs> Here's the Kolgari village, and so this is using some of the kind of, you know, the leaves and things you don't see represented real often, maybe some different colors and stuff you don't really see used a lot, but uh, creating a nice almost elves type of landscape. Yeah, and the black ground makes all those colors really pop. It's good. Here's a Star Wars uh, research outpost, and I love what the builder did by using these panels kind of just on their edge and just leaning them against uh, the the kind of walkway there because it gives a, a nice kind of haphazard look to the barrier almost. Uh, I, I like that. And then also the, the landing pads in the middle there. Yeah, the borders that they've built around those landing pads are really, I mean, intricate is the word that I'm thinking of. Each section of the border is, you know, assembled from, gosh, probably a dozen pieces, maybe maybe even more. And, uh, and then, you know, it looks like it maybe takes uh, two dozen to get all the way around those. So just imagining putting those assemblies on and we get the lights. Look at that. Perfect that's timing. A, Once again, it's amazing how these things always turn on right when we walk by. Yeah, that's a really nice looking, looking assembly there. And then down here, we've got a few different scenes, the scenes, the boxcar children camps. You can see the book it's based off of in the back, the Eagle Bluff Lighthouse from Wisconsin. It's really fantastic. And then some like windmills. Here's a uh, M&M candy dispenser. I'm not even sure how this operates exactly. I guess it's that build right there. And so you kind of push the lever and the M&Ms pop out. For here... Uh, these medieval buildings, crazy detailed, kind of done in that style where it's just like almost greebling, but instead of on like spaceships, it's done on medieval buildings. You just pack in the detail on the walls. Yeah, really, you know, it, that almost gives a sense of scale that many Lego models don't achieve, right? When you can get that teeny tiny detail in there, gives you a, it makes it more believable that this is a large building. Next to that, uh, this is Ben Pitchford. We featured his large builds a number of times here at the show, and this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So he's got the different la layers here, which and the lights on make it look even better. Uh, I love his the graffiti on the like subway and the walls is really cool. Um, then the great architecture up top, and then obviously like the layer on the bottom uh, with the lights and the the tunnels and everything. Yeah, and the lettering the the. The letters down at the bottom lit up from behind. You know, that negative space is the letter, the TMNT, and that lit up green, you know, just is, reminds me of like the ooze that, you know, turned these turtles into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Exactly. So this will be a build that looks fantastic during World of Lights here at Chicago, which is always just a very unique thing that Brickworld does. Really incredible time here uh, that's happening tomorrow night. Uh, Montana Dream Home by Philip Stratzma. Uh, he's had some great builds over the years here at Chicago, and this one certainly doesn't disappoint. I mean, just the every element of this just captures like the real life feel of a home so nicely. Even the outdoor patio and everything with the food is is really nice. Thank you. And then the Lunar Cheese Company. <laughs> so you can see the the round building there. We got all the red canisters that they're kind of attaching to that tower in the back. They seem to be collecting collecting the cheese from them. <laughs> oh, because the moon is made out of cheese. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> you can see the, the mice eating into it there as well. <laughs> Here's the, the Mars Mobile Exploration Habitat. I'm not sure. It looks like that build might move. Yeah, it's all up and running. Around the corner here, uh, these are builds by uh, Barbara Hole, who is just an incredible builder. I love seeing her work at uh, you know all all the Brick World shows we go to. Whenever she has stuff on display, it's just always a treat. We've uh, you can see on the channel the, her different builds we've featured over the years, but she does this black light work that's really incredible. This build on the top is just amazing. We'll definitely have a more kind of in-depth video on that build in particular, but the way the kind of river runs through there and then all of the blue accents that glow under the black light is just, uh, I love that. Oh, speaking of scale, look what she's done with this purple one down here with the submarine. She's really kind of like, you know, drawn you into this large scene, you know, that, that, that it, it is much larger than it feels at first glance because you've got that little submarine down in there. Really nice. 
And not only does she do kind of the black light stuff, but she also does some really kind of great artwork type of stuff. Uh, some of this like mid-century modern almost type of effect here. So the the Tea Party playset, a lot of that we've featured in a past video uh, from Brickworld uh, Indie this year. So definitely check that out if you want to see more of it. But a lot of this work, uh, even like the, the flowers and the vase, is all just really amazing. I love this one down here. Yesterday's flowers, it, I mean, it almost doesn't even look like Lego it's just really cool, and right next to it is Tomorrow's Flowers, sort of a futuristic take on the one, the one next to it. Really good job. Next to that here we have, let's see, it looks like this is like a farm scene based on... No, no, this uh, is this your build here? This is, no, this is my daughter's build right here. This is her very first mock. Wow. Yeah, I know. Isn't that great? What did she build for her first mock? So she called it Mini Mini Maya's Coloring Kit. She's got little broken crayons here and a pencil. And it's got the used eraser on it. So, And then, of course, the coloring pad. <laughs> great stuff. Well, hopefully she'll continue to build and we'll see more of her work in the future. I hope so, too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And then the farm scene next to that would use like the Google Maps image down to create it. Yeah, and I love this little red uh, Spaceman Spiff craft. That is the, uh, the sci-fi alter ego of Calvin from the Calvin and Hobbes okay. strip. Uh, and, you know, I love anything that kind of represents a, uh, a you know, retro sci-fi is, is really my cup of tea. Good job with that. And this next scene, I think we have the builder still hard at work, you know, making it look as good as possible before the public comes in. Just, just twinking a little bit. Uh, yeah, so we have a, a very hands-on activity here, and I'll come around and start moving. Okay, yeah, you can give us an example of, of how this build operates. Sure thing. Here's one of the easy ones. Just a simple piston si system that moves the jaws open and close on my giant Venus fly traps right here. I like the one that has the guy in it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You have to have a little bit of a story in there as well. We have some pterodactyls flying around. And all of these are operated by the controls out front here. Absolutely. No electric motors at all. Uh, we have our, our big wheel here That's one that, that has a great effect, but it tends to jam a little bit but I'm keeping it anyway. A, a girl called it earlier the peekaboo monster, and that's what I'm, I'm going to call it from now on. Uh, moving down the line, we have the drawbridge. The drawbridge likes to close, and I was just working on it to see if I could get it to open again. Probably won't with the horse in the way, though. And it still needs a little work, but it's working better than it was before. There we go. Uh, not bad. Yep. We have some more pterodactyls. You and can't have too many pterodactyls. No, you can't. You <laughs> cannot have too many pterodactyls. There is the tree. I love the tree. I'm just going to point out, even though it is a hands-off type experience. Uh, we also have some archers moving up and down. I have to move this one very quickly because it's torqued so much. Uh, another nice dramatic one is my catapults down here. Oh, I love that. That's a very fun one. I have a water wheel. Uh, and then I have two men sword fighting over there. And the great thing about this one is I can just keep on turning this c clockwise or counterclockwise, and they will keep on swinging back and forth at each other. So, so that's fun too. Over here I have the other archers moving up and down, which is a much nicer technique, but uses a very old part. So I could only do four of them this time. And then finally, we have our witch casting a fire spell. And there we have it, and I hope the kids enjoy it tomorrow. Yeah, those are fantastic. So is the idea then that the public would come by and actually be able to kind of do this themselves? Absolutely. I did a special non-LEGO event that was a Harry Potter event, and it was interesting because everyone asked to take pictures, asked permission first, which is, of course, okay. And then they would try to touch everything, which is not okay. <laughs> and so myself and some others had observed that, you know, they're, they're not getting the tactile experience of touching the LEGO, and they really want to. I'm sure you've seen this before at conventions where the kids really want to touch it. They have their hands out and they go no and put their hands behind their back at the last minute. This is a way of giving them an outlet. This is the, the bot where you can turn stuff. I also want to share with you something that's not going to be available tomorrow, but will be available at World of Lights and on Sunday. 
So that one hasn't been hooked up yet, but it's because it uses light bricks and I don't want to wear out the Lego batteries. So you get the fire movement and the light bricks in there. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Well, that's great work, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you for taping this. Yeah. We'll come around the corner from that then, and I think this just about finishes the last section here for us, so we'll finish out this area. Uh, and then we'll have to move on to the other side of the exhibit. So this fort here, Fort Bloodlust, I love this because it captures that like sloped wall effect so nicely that a lot of yes. kind of the star forts had with that design. And then it's built on top of the rocks and kind of on the cliff side. I love just all the little details here. We've got a pod of dolphins. We've got like some kind of ice queen over here, like freezing herself across the water. A clown down in a, a, a water cave. I don't know what's going on here, but this is great stuff. And, of course, a dragon. In the last mock, we had dragons and pterodactyls. That should be the next theme of the next LEGO Con. L LEGO convention. Dragons and pterodactyls. That's it. I That's mean, all it, it needs It to sells be. itself. I mean, how can you turn that down? No, I just changed it. It's something con dragons versus pterodactyls. I think the versus really you know, paints the picture. Yes, it's always got to be the versus. <laughs> so then some fantastic ships here. I love the one, I think we've showed this in past years, but the turtle ship there, the Korean turtle ship is just such a unique ship design and something you don't see with Lego very often. I think that's a really cool build. Uh, the Picton Castle with all the rigging in it. There's some really, really great ships here. I love it. And then that brings us back to the castle siege that we started at in this section. So now we'll move on over to the other side of the convention hall. In this section here, you've got uh, the large helicopters and then all the dinosaurs underneath. So there's uh, some serious action about to go down here. I think things are getting kind of dicey there on the ground uh, with the dinosaurs. Then here you've got a massive monorail that runs through a whole bunch of this city. And you've got the monorail station. Uh, then all of the, the white and yellow kind of road and city track there. You got all the wires, the electrical wires running throughout. Uh, I love the, the boat race out front here. And then you've got kind of a jet formation as well. And coming around here, uh, you've got a fantastic modular layout, particularly this uh, Fort Legorado, which I absolutely love that set as a modular building. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's just a super nice, unique take on the fort. I think that's a really cool idea. And then the massive skyscrapers behind there. You can see kind of the black towers as one set and the red tower next to it. We round the corner here. We have some, some builders hard at work. <laughs> what all are you guys working on here? <laughs> what, is, what is this here? Well, the... This is just a fun little thing me and my friends decided to do where there are dinosaurs and red coats fighting. Uh, you can see the blue coats are assisting them with walkie-talkie support. You can see the Velociraptor as a walkie-talkie. Um, and uh, let's see, oh, this guy uh, dropped his musket and that proved to be a bad idea when you're fighting Velociraptors. We found that that type of dinosaur is very ticklish, which is okay. Um, it's also important to keep your mammoth well brushed, so we have that going on there. Uh, there are some other details, but one of the key ones is that the red coats are stealing the dinosaurs' eggs, which might see, make them seem like the bad guys, but we also have a dinosaur stealing a baby. So maybe they're, they're, there's equal reasons for some give and take here. <laughs> give and take in this battle, yes. Maybe there's no right side in war, yeah. Well, I like the direction you're going in. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Then uh, here's kind of a multi layered city layout. So not only do you get the front buildings up here, but then a very steep road up and then you get the buildings in the in the background with some fantastic architecture there as well and then over here we had Chippendales with Chippendales. <laughs> over here you've got oh yeah some fantastic details all in there <laughs> uh, as we move down here this uh, windmill in particular is very nice I think it uses the the flipper pieces there to create kind of the the roof so kind of, I think that's a really cool technique. The train tunnel in the back is very nice. And then we'll keep moving down here through the kind of city road section, kind of the refinery there. And as we round the corner, you get to the 
lot of different trains, lots of different trains in this section, and then also kind of a lot of construction equipment as well. So you can see up front here is all of the kind of construction-related trains. And down here, a uh, Star Wars kind of uh, the Duplo base, but then Star Wars build up on it for the train. It's a unique take. And then lots of uh, minifigs having fun here at kind of the carnival, the Ferris wheel. And round the corner out with some small farm scenes. Uh, another super tiny take on uh, Fort Legorado and a Boy Scout camp over here. So that finishes out this section. Now we'll go across to the other side of the vendors and check out the other side of the hall. So we are back on the other side of the vendors now and we'll check out kind of the second half of the room uh, with all the displays. So the first exhibit we're at right here is actually an exhibit remembering Arthur Gujic. And Arthur Gujic is a really talented builder. We featured his work a number of times on the channel over the years. He sadly passed away earlier this year, but he was very active in a lot of the Brickworld shows, uh, doing a lot of incredible mosaics, which you see a few on display here. And he did it in very different ways. So you see how the one in the middle there used kind of just the black stud pieces. On the right, it's all what, like signs and control pieces there? Yeah, this, I love this one. This, I mean, this looks like John Lennon to me. And all of these printed elements are like really from like right in the, my late childhood. I, I, and I love it. All of these printed elements just take me right back. It's really awesome. So yeah, Arthur had some just really amazing work over the years. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out online and see some of the great stuff he built. The other side of this area is a nice western town. Uh, you see some of the classic like Native American uh, teepees in the back corner there. You've always got that the standard train tunnel that you've got to have in every western town. And then over here, different takes on some of the classic western sets as well as a number of uh, custom builds as well. I always love these, the red shutters with like the general store piece there. Western theme, so many awesome pieces. And of course, back in the back there, Joshua, right. just for you. <laughs> They put this here, Judy Payne and Bill Payne, who are very nice people. They, they knew I'd stop by and wanted to check out Fort Legorado. So they have all the guys coming into the fort looking good. I love it. Nice, nice uh, western town layout there. We are heading on over to one of the builds that I have heard about more often this week than maybe any other build. This is the Princess Bride build, and it is inconceivable. <laughs> Exactly right, Boone. What a perfect word to use for this display. This was like eight or ten different builders, something like that. So you, you've got the, the pop-up book with the characters. You've got the farm, Miracle Max's hut. The, and one really cool thing about this, like the castle and the mountain actually have different scenes from the movie spread throughout it. And so you can see the assault on the castle here. And there's different rooms where the, the different scenes took place. You What's the, this? This is, this is like the torture chamber <laughs> down. The pit of despair? Yeah, the pit of despair. Um, yeah, and then you, you can see over there, you've got them climbing up the, the rope on that big giant rock face. Uh, someone told me, I think it was Jake Sadovich, was like, I think if you knew the movie inside and out, you could walk around this mock and replay the entire movie in your head as you look at this mock. Here they are, you've got, um, uh, you know, Buttercup and Dread Pirate Roberts rolling down the hill, and that's when he says... Uh, what does he say? Yeah, yes. Oh man, I just it just slipped my mind. He says, um, "As you wish," and that's when she knows who who he is, and and she knows that that he loves her. Uh, the big reveal. You got the the three main uh, terrors of the fire forest here. Yeah, I'm trying to see if those big um, rodents of unusual size are in there. Where are they? Right here on the the, the two. Oh yeah. yeah, there it is. There are the 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 rodents of unusual size. Man, this thing is... We'll definitely have a more in-depth video with uh, with one of the builders kind of taking you around everything. But yeah, it's just just amazing. And if uh, Princess Bride and Brickworld sound familiar to you, there's actually another really cool collab probably three or four, maybe five years ago now that we covered here that we also had different scenes in the Princess Bride uh, that was very impressive. So, you know, bringing it back. Here is a build based on the movie Airplane, which I've never seen, Boone, so what can you tell me about this? Man, it's been a very long time since I watched Airplane, but of course, I you know, I think that this white-haired pilot up here would probably be the Leslie Nielsen character, 
And then the other part that I remember from the movie is the jive talkers. So that would be these two guys right here in, uh, on this you know, right-hand side of the plane. And one of the stewardesses there you know, talking to them. And, but every single other character sitting here in this plane is some reference to the film. And uh, they've really got a lot of things packed into this build here from Airplane. Here is a wonderful weapon. This is Buffy's scythe, and you don't see, you know, this. It, the bricks it's on are brick build even, and then the, the size of the weapon is really incredible. Uh, quite a lot of bricks went into that. The iron turtle here, I love the treads. It's like brick built treads on that with the cheese slopes to kind of give the grip. And it's about to take out a saguaro cactus, which I believe is like an endangered f flora down in... Uh the Arizona Sonoran Desert. I'm gonna guess the people inside that turtle don't really care. Uh, here's the San Diego, California temple. Really great architecture there. Little skyscraper. There's a ball pit. One of those levels in the skyscraper is a ball pit. I just had to point it out. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, then we got some mosaics here, like a rainbow gecko. Taylor Swift. This is uh, a number of these, not all of them are by E.J. Bocan. Uh, who always has crazy awesome mosaics, rainbow. I really like that rainbow. It looks like melting crayons at the top. Oh, that's true. Cool. Equality, and then Deadpool, and his face is all made out of uh, weapons. Very nice. Stonehill Stronghold, so uh, I'm just a great example of the types of impressive detailed castle builds you'll see at Lego shows like this. It's nominated for Best Medieval Building. Uh, excellent castles, the, the, the buildings and uh, landscape are very nice. Then we'll come around here. It's like a builder still assembling something. What is this you're working on? I'm reassembling okay. it after putting more lights in. Uh, just a desert research facility. Uh, we've got some fun Breaking Bad characters in there. You can't see them right now, but when it's lit up, you'll see them. Uh, you got uh, Dr. William Brenner from Stranger Things tending to some trees. Uh, all kinds of pop culture references throughout it, um, you know, kind of harkens to Area 51 and other weird government facilities, so. Yeah, sure thing. Well, thank you. Looking forward to seeing more lights in it. <laughs> yeah. Come down here, and this is the, the happiest, most colorful train on display at the whole show here. They even have their own soundtrack. There are so many Unikitties packed into this train, it's kind of absurd. I, th I think there's even part of the train is built out of Unikitty heads. Or maybe they're just, I don't know, sticking their faces against it. That doesn't make any sense, but it's, it's miraculously whimsical. Yes. It's nominated for Best Original Train, and I think you definitely, definitely have to give it some points there. Then you've got this whole, like, almost a Amazonian rainforest type of uh, scene here. Well, yeah, this is the wild thornberries, and... I'm wondering where those heads come from. Was there wild thornberries at some point, or did they make these custom? I don't know the answer to that question. I'm going to be looking it up. Yes. All, this whole display right here that we're looking at was built by a couple couple different builders, and yeah, they did excellent work here. Uh, let's see. What else do we have down here? The French countryside. So got kind of the car repair shop, and then the more typical kind of garden manor style there. And then this one down at the end I love as well. This is Roast Porg on a Stick. Uh, this is nominated for Best Humor. I think I love how they've got the Porg just standing there next to the one on the stick. Yeah, and uh, he doesn't, he, he seems afraid, but he must be uh, frozen afraid because he's not running away. Great work there. <laughs> and keep coming down this way. Uh, this is actually, I guess, vendors down the rest of this row, so we'll probably go ahead and let's switch over and come down this way. Make sure we hit everything here. So this is the Lego Northern Illinois Lit Train Club. And so this would be kind of the local builders that always come out and represent and have a lot of great, great builds. Here's a Culver's Boone. We're supposed to be taking you there at some point. Yeah, I look forward to eating at Culver's here in the Midwest. <laughs> Boone is having a great cross-cultural experience here during his trip to Brickworld. Yeah, this, this big dark gray and green building, I think is the very first thing that caught my eye when I walked onto the floor at Brickworld this year. Um, I think it's a really kind of neat use of those 
those big like trusses that I think can kind of be challenging to find creative uses for because they're just big and clunky. But when you build something this big, you can use that as just a piece of the detail. And I think they've done it really well here. And then keep moving down with some of the trains there and their city layout. There's like a classic Dairy Queen. That's always cool. A uh, little drive-in diner. Uh, another west, great western town here with very detailed interiors in a lot of the buildings. Uh, some of that is even hard to see back there, but there's a lot going on. That's pretty cool. The next mock is uh, going to do very well next year at uh, Dragons versus Pterodactyls. We've got a lot of different dragons in here. It looks like we've got uh, you know a, a version of Lloyd's Green Dragon Mech that appears to go around on a railroad track there. Some parking, little shops there. Here's a uh, candy, 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 Benny's. It's like a little candy dispenser. Play a little games, so you can push some candy off. Let's see if Josh or if John gets lucky with any candy here. It's not doing anything. <laughs> no candy for you, John. <laughs> There's a nice classic space mosaic on the side. Here is a zoo. So you get the aquarium and a bunch of different animals. It's the, the Brickfield Zoo. And then down here is the big giant rail yard. So you've got all sorts of trains on display. Once again, beautiful train designs all throughout Brick World. I'm wondering if at the back there, is that a simulated train wreck or did those get misplaced while they were kind of working on the display? It'll be a mystery. That's a very good question. Do you think the, uh, is the, the train's supposed to be like that back there? Yes. Okay. That's all we needed to know. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Shout, shout, out to, shout out to Brick Mania there, Rail Killer. Brick Mania, definitely a sponsor. <laughs> Come around here. Two men in a truck. And another nice tower. And that tower has a really nice detailed interior on each floor. It's like you can see into the window and part of the hallway. I love the, the classic Lego colors in the front of that building, like the Lego Duplo brick. Here's the Santa Fe Supervan and Caravan. So I think that's based on the Santa Fe train. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> and then we'll end this section with the kind of mech character there. And then this build here is uh, probably one of the few layouts that's appeared in every single tour video we've done at Brick World Chicago over the years because this builder has had this as many years as we've been coming here, but he always adds to it, changes it up, switches it up in different ways. Yeah, this is a really impressive medieval build. And you sort of start at this end and, and it takes you on a journey into you know sort of the center of the castle area there. Really wonderful, lot of lot of nights. Yeah, the the brick built tents. I think I'm sure I've pointed this out in past years. Are always one of the things that stand out to me here. The fact that you can get so many colors and variations using bricks. And then down the jousting down here. There's the guy falling off his horse. Yeah, I was gonna say this is a great replica of a Renaissance fair, but I, I'm, I'm sure they're trying to make it more more realistic to the actual time period and not a recreation of a recreation. It's a nice trebuchet build. Here is, let's see, down here next is some kind of work in progress. It looks like sort of a classic space. It's a massive layout, but the top appears to not have been placed on yet. I'm excited about what this is gonna maybe look like tomorrow, just judging by what we can see so far. Then this area here, I think, is a lot of the Eurobricks members all around this section. And so there's a lot of names that I'm sure you'll recognize from different builders here. So Tim Liddy, the first one nominated for Best Original Train, he just blows me away every year with all the work he brings. Uh, just incredible stuff Tim does every year. So we walk around here. Here's a way scaled up uh, cog ship in the bottle. The When this thing's running, the water moves and the ship rocks back and forth. And Jake Sadovich, the fan designer of the Lego Ideas Ship in a Bottle, really admired this sort of take on a ship in a bottle. Of course it does, because, you know, the build itself just isn't good enough. you got to have the movement. You gotta have... <laughs> so 
been nominated for best large building here. Got some great builds. Then you got the Goblin King's Fortress. I love the like Duplo Goblin guy there on the bridge. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's like what Hobgoblin or his son from uh, Harry or from a uh, Spider Man. Elven trees up top there. This next layout here is actually one of my favorites because this was a theme. The, the adventure theme was something that was like very much in my prime of, of Lego building and collected so many of the sets. The, the treasure quest game in the back there that's hard to see under the hat. So many, it has the blimp, so many cool elements as going you know around the world to all these exotic locations. And I just loved getting these sets as a kid. And then all of the, they apparently had all this merch. I wasn't even aware of all this stuff. They had t-shirts, uh, all this, all this fanny packs, everything. Yeah, I think the, the Mothmobile right down here, just noteworthy because they did such an excellent job recreating the, uh, you know, uh, the, the Mothman colors in a little vehicle for him, as well as, uh, yeah, the Catmobile there. But moving on to the right, this is one of my favorite, what w could we call this neoclassic space? Um, but one of my favorites that I've ever seen in person. I just think that, that the depth... Uh, and the execution on, you know, a fairly, uh, that's probably like four 48 by 48 base plates equivalent there. And they've just pa packed in so much and really used the space well and the colors and, uh, you know, the, those little elements to get in the detail. And nominated for best mecha over here is the Blacktron Harvester mech. Great base and mech. I love, see I love seeing the big mechs build on like kind of spindly legs. I was look kind of fragile but also very intimidating best medieval building this is awesome the the sort of uh, angles in there are really cool kind of like star fort angles almost that you expect but you don't see that very often in a castle like this so that the towers and then the inner angles there are just really cool and then we have uh, a green car and then also an arrow making sure that you see the car <laughs> don't want to miss that here's Kind of a post-apocalypse, almost fallout type of thing. Some nice construction figures. Uh, nice little tree beach scene. And Star Wars scenes there as well. As we round the corner here, got some nice builds over here. We got the builder sitting here. How are you doing? Good. What do you have here on display? I've got some, i got a spaceship, a mech, some bionicles, uh, assorted tanks and helicopters, red pickup truck, and a um, tiny little rocket. <laughs> there you go, thank you, a nice variety of builds. <laughs> Here's some builds, it looks like these are from one of the competitions that probably took place during the show, so there's always little build competitions happening, kind of the non-public days for the attendees to do. Joe's Brick Depot with some more detailed trains. Look at the like the colors on some of these, like this one here, the 911 honoring first responders one. I love the colors on that. Oh, this pyramids mosaic is super cool. Yeah, I love the way that, I think this is based on, uh, based on some artist's work. I believe Josh Cottrell has done that and he, He's done some great stuff there. He normally does GBC stuff, but he's kind of expanded out to some of this type of work. What do we have here, Boone? Oh man, okay. This the best sea uh, nominated for best sea vessel. We've got Billy Goat's steamboat. I think this thing is wonderful. We've got all the Fabuland characters on there, but the color scheme that they've selected on this boat, not just the yellow with the blue, but we've got two-tone blue and we've got two-tone yellow, and it, those just all those colors work so well together. I think a, a boat physically impossible in the real world, but for Fabuland, everything is possible. And right next to it, we've also got uh, another Fabuland-operated uh, uh, airship this time called the Goat Boat, and those are actually two different uh, builds from two different builders, but they found their way together uh, in a fantastic world of Fabuland. The Goat Boat there was built by Mark Larson, who his favorite theme is, is Fabuland. He had a crazy large uh, Fabuland build a few years ago here at Brick World and has done some awesome stuff with the theme and yeah there's just some excellent uh builds there up here the imperial march i really love this one again by tim liddy uh the color for like the statue there 
I think it's almost like a like a hologram type of look to it. It's really nice. And then some more. This is a Mark Larson layout here as well. Uh, so this is you know you get the very colorful train going around, and then I think it's supposed to be sort of an underwater scene, almost like Coral Palace. So it's all the coral all over the the structures and the rocks. Yeah, and it's like this train is sort of some sort of underwater creature swimming around throughout. I really enjoy when people use the train systems, you know, to depict some movement other than just a train. I, I, of course, I love trains, but this is very compelling to me. The, some more Fabulin, the ele elephant caravan. I love it. The Fabulin characters are just so unique. You never get tired of seeing them. Yeah, I agree with that. Some people hate Fabuland. But How could I, you hate Fabuland? I, I don't know. I love it. I think they're whimsical and wonderful. And and now we're going to move on to just about the coolest thing here on the floor this year, this the is, potion shop. This is the Eurobricks collab. So people who have watched our videos in the past know the Virtual Lug and Eurobricks always have the big competition going on for the collabs here at Brickwood Chicago. And this year... Uh, Virtual Lug did the Princess Bride that we saw earlier, and then this is Eurobricks with the Potion Shop. And I think we were talking to Mark Larson earlier, there's 18 builders represented here, and every part of this build individually would be great if you just saw it on a sitting on a table. But then together, it's just insane what these builders can achieve, and they're also talented. There's a there's like a rug on the, the ground there. The One of my favorite parts, this is Josh's, uh, he just scaled up the box piece oh, and made it, <laughs> made it much bigger. The boxes are actually the corners on it there. <laughs> That's great. I love this hanging plant up here. Look at this thing. It's like almost looks like a real plant hanging there. Yes, Barbara's work always incredible. So uh, this, yeah, the potion shop just really blew us away this year. And uh, always great to see the, the work that uh, your Bricks collabs do and, and all the collabs here at Brick World. So we'll keep coming down this direction then. And every now and then uh, from that what was it, the Unikitty train back there that was blasting that music? Every now and then I hear Return to Innocence, and, uh, and it reminds me uh, of, of youth and, and joy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Boone, do you need a minute? <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay. Here we got some trains. We have a, a bunch more trains over here. Joshua, what do you think about them? Uh, I, I think they are, they are trains. There is some good stuff in here. I don't know a lot about trains, but it's just like the colors one, that interest this me. This one that has the, um, you know, the, the tractors, the, what the dozers are on there. Yeah, the dozers on them. That's, that's good. I like it. Those little details are what make an experience. That's exactly right. Speaking of blasting music, shout out to Rich Boy J, someone who's just blasting his uh, 501st Battle Pack uh, rap song that he dropped earlier this year. So, uh. I guess they're enjoying that over the speakers earlier. <laughs> some nice box cars all the way down here. This uh, Union Pacific in front is like the same thing all the way. To, some of these trains are very long. Some more dozers. And then nominated for best replica train out here is some very detailed train engines. Now we'll come across the aisle here, and what do we have right here? So this is the big red lighthouse, and I don't. There is a photo there, so it appears to be based on a real building. There's a lot of red in that build. Next to that is the Battle of Borodino. So this is the uh, well-known battle when Napoleon invaded Russia in uh, 1812, and finally got the Russian army to confront him, uh, and you have. The, just a small section of the battle going here, but I do enjoy this. I can confirm that Joshua was correct about all of those <laughs> historical details. Thank you, Boone. I, I like to have my work fact-checked and uh, peer-sourced. <laughs> so, <laughs> some Lego Star Wars mocks down here. And then we've got a battle between the police and some heavily armed... Uh, villains there out oh, in the I, desert. I, I just think it's notable real quick that yeah. that the Napoleon battle and the two Star Wars battles um, They're all by the same artist and they're all similar. They're all these guys kind of you know I don't know what would you say about it. I just wanted to draw you know attention to the similarities between these three battles while two of them took place in the Star Wars world and one took place in our actual own history 
Right. It really makes you think about things like sci-fi and the way that that's based on real life events and what inspiration the creators of those movies and sort of books and things take from real life. Thank you for taking a moment to recognize that with me. <laughs> no, I appreciate you pointing that out, Boone. It's very important. <laughs> this is um, a really meaningful to me because uh, this is depictions of, uh, what does it say, now you're playing with the power and owed to the NES. So the Nintendo Entertainment System the you know the first Nintendo system that was available for home users was really like my first experience with uh, with video games and so of course down here at this end we've got the dog from Duck Hunt and uh, down at the other end we've got Super Mario of course I think this is Mike Tyson's Punch Out but these are some of the things that really resonate with me and people in my generation as far as video gaming goes so I appreciate this I do recognize Mario out of all those characters. There you go. <laughs> and then what do we have? Nominated for best uh, humor, Alien Ripley versus Alien Queen. That's an interesting nomination for best humor. I guess the guy taking the selfie there. Yeah. I'm having a hard time interpreting that. But I do, I do love the mechanical things going on in these builds. It's the same guy taking a selfie with uh, Darth Vader's castle throne room as well. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah, good. <laughs> Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. There's a lot going on in this build, lots of great details. Looks like spring at Hogwarts in this picture. We've got a lot of flowers blooming. A lot of people filling up the sidewalks around the school. There's a house elf hiding up there on the, you know, between the towers. We've got Dumbledore waving his wand and drinking some wine up there at the top. Very nice details. And then a small crate build next to that. So we've featured some uh, massive crates over the years, but this is a much smaller version, this one here. And then the Lunar Return, I think there's the, the selfie man is in all these as well. I actually, I guess every single one of these. So I just realized he's in all these builds. Okay, so this is, these are all from the same yeah. builder. I guess that's the case. And apparently, I would assume that's him taking selfies in these memorable moments of cinematic history, <laughs> which if you throw the <laughs> lunar return in there. Boone, you know we struggle with the comments already. We can't have you throwing that kind of stuff out there. I, I just said along with. I, I'm not trying to make any claims. Here's Avengers Endgame, the final battle. I'm not sure how, uh, uh, is it Patrick from SpongeBob got in there? Yeah, and he has no hands. Well, it is a battle. And he is a starfish. I guess it's accurate. Uh, this looks like some custom figs along here. So uh, they're, you know, some builders do incredible work with custom mini figs. I would just want to comment on the Batmobile. That's a great looking, you know, that looks like it could be a Lego set. Uh, I love Batmobiles. And Tyler did a good job. Tyler, oh, Tyler, TJ, and Ian. Did a nice little job with this Batmobile. Good work. And the guy behind it is, wow, creepy. We got like teeth showing through this guy's face on each side. What is this? Attack on Titan. Hmm. Nice little Invasion of Utah build there. 75th anniversary this year. And then the battle at St. Vith. I love some of the colors you see in here are very unique. You don't see a lot of bright colors in uh, battle scenes normally. And then all the snow over here is really nice, adds a lot of detail. And, and we'll keep coming around the corner here. <laughs> go, go this way. See what we have on this side of the table. It looks like some builders were trying to create some Nerf weapons. Yeah, I, I would imagine these are functional Nerf guns here. Endor, as so we come down here, surrounded on Geonosis. You got a lot of minifigs on a base plate in that build. I like the little the little mech next to it. <laughs> if we <laughs> keep coming down, <laughs> I'm really distracted right now. I am too. It's just crazy the things people do at these shows. <laughs> You never know what you're going to see walking around a Lego convention, do you, Boone? No, nope, you never know. <laughs> this is the workings of the Malaysian Patronus Twin Towers. Oh, so is this uh, like them building it? I'm not entirely sure. Bit of a different take on it there. Uh, then we've got 
the Battle of Nemnar Station. So a different type of Star Wars uh, scene. You don't see this one very often. Sort of a crate look to it a little bit. And then some smaller vignettes. I love some excellent micro building. Like this one right here, the castle on the hill stands out. I mean, look at the ship. It's like three pieces or something. Yeah, that is really expressive for how simple a build it is. And then if we keep coming, here's a picturesque sunset. So you get kind of like the silhouettes there in the foreground. Forced perspective, I like that. <laughs> I love this Duplo build called Epic Spaceship. <laughs> you know, they went for it. You got to give them credit. <laughs> the micro spaceships here as well. And then I think that finishes out this section for us. And we'll come to the back and walk around this way. So some nice Bionicle type characters. I love, are these your builds here? Very impressive. What What's one of your favorites from the collection? Uh, it would have to be the equal dragon weapon right here, which I managed to finish in time just for the show. <laughs> that is a, that's a massive build. Very nice. What, I see some kind of like artwork here. Is that what it's based on? I actually have the page right here. It's from the Monster Hunter Illustrations art book, which has a lot of unused concept art from like the first Monster Hunter games. Okay. Yeah. And this is just like probably the most famous example of unused concept art, equal dragon weapon. Like in the community, it's mentioned a lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just because it actually has like a lot of lore behind it, even though it's not featured anywhere. <laughs> gotcha. Well, thank you. You uh, captured it very nicely. Thank you. Little Wizard of Oz scene there. Then here's a Fallout build, so you get kind of the iconic scenes underneath there with all the Fallout rooms, and then up top, it's, uh, you know, everybody for themselves. I always enjoy Fallout builds. It's fun to think about the, you know, the secret kind of oasis underground and, uh, you know, the terror above ground. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about how much you dwell on the end of the world. <laughs> This uh, this uh, classic arcade machine here is actually very. That's all brick build, I think. Like none of that is decals. That's uh, even the the white sections and everything there is is all brick built. That's pretty amazing. Some nice apartment type buildings here. Some skyscrapers, and then well lit bat cave. Yeah, I like this bat cave. Anyone who works in the dinosaur and the penny into their bat cave gets a you know a, a thumbs up from me. And is that is there is John Wick in the the Wayne Manor with Batman? That's what it looks like to me. That is what it looks like. <laughs> a little crossover episode. Yeah, and then what is this like, Mister Freeze? Maybe Mister Freeze's. I don't see a mock card for that, but. It looks like he's got a laboratory going on there. Some excellent characters here. Love the, the fire character back there. This one here is like the Star Wars Praetorian Guard Beast. And then we'll catch some of the stuff on the back side here as well. Let's see, is that a, like Ice Planet? Was that the theme with the, the blue and white there and the trans orange? Yeah, Ice Planet 2002, which was the future back when Ice Planet came out. <laughs> That's kind of how that works. <laughs> Another Deadpool mosaic. Sh shout out to Dalek Bricks. Some uh, Doctor Who builds. I really like all the you know various colors and transparent elements used in this the the 13th Doctor's TARDIS. Really neat looking uh, kind of assemblies there. Then there's this scene here. I haven't actually seen this. This is pretty good here. It's the brick tuber red carpet. So we make a cameo on the left side there, going down interviewing the, the Lego YouTubers on the red carpet. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> is he just too good is over there, right? And who else we got in there? Looks like you got, uh, you got Jay in there. You got some, some Jang. All sorts of folks making an appearance. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, Kevin Hinkle out here in the front in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's good stuff. And then the Mars mining base. 
I think we saw one of the uh, similar themed ship earlier like that. Some smaller Star Wars vignettes. And then a very large arrival at Cloud City. Uh, is this a is this the, the official kit, do you think? I don't know. It it looks like maybe it is with modified interiors or it's someone's complete original design. This one this area in here looks to me like the recent official set, but then it looks like there's some maybe expanded um, interior elements back here. What are you guys working on here? We're just building with some random bricks, bricks we pilt, uh, picked up. I am messing around with a uh, Nexo Knight jetpack piece. Why not? Experimenting, doing some cool stuff? Turned into a sort of proton pack, I think. Not quite sure what it is. Let's and keep it up! This is my greatest and most recent creation, Sombrero Prime. <laughs> you see the shape of the cockpit. <laughs> so he had... So he can keep his hat on. Sombrero Prime. It keeps it keeps the hat on. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll head to the left now down here. And I think the KC Brick Lab is the next stop on our tour. So got a couple aisles left to show and then we'll be we Oh, we did not. You're right, Boone. So actually we should hit that next, shouldn't we? making sure we stay on track here. So here's kind of an island in the middle. Uh, what, what all do we have here? So what we have here are some Five Nights at Freddy's and Bending at the Ink Machine. It's all horror game stuff, so very creepy games. So I don't know how many people see them, but lots of little kids like to see these things, you know. And then on the other side, we got... Some. We can walk down there real quick. I don't know how time do you want this, so I'll you can keep just give us like the 30 second overview. Okay, so yeah, we got Disney Earth Year 3000. It is taking place in New York. It's the new location, and it's in the year 3000, basically. So we got four locations here. We got. Caribbean Park, which is like pirates and animals. We got Fancy Lakes, which is princesses and princes. And then we got Tomorrowland. We got Star Wars, Avengers, other sorts of superhero and futuristic stuff, you know. And then we got Toon Street over here, which is all the other tunes and all the fun, realistic characters. Oh, we also have a uh, Halloween Town there too, and then Halloween Town looks like a sad place. Yes, especially with all the clay technic groundwork, and then we got the giant castle in the center here. I love your different take on the Disney theme. Also, this part right here is definitely my favorite. Yes, I definitely wanted to have a very great interview with someone and. Who else would be the best talker? So, yes, he would be the best one to describe this place, I think. Yep. I like it. Well, fun detail. Thank you. Thank you. We'll come over here now to the gamer lug display. And so this whole section is all of the gamer lugs. You might, you might recognize one or two people sitting there uh, as with some of these great builds here. So you've got builds from Nick Jensen, a whole bunch of different uh, talented builders all around here. Uh, from Destiny, uh, Alien, I think this, this is uh, Nick's latest series of builds right here from the 40th anniversary of Alien. Some really great stuff. So we'll have more in-depth videos on that. And you should also go check out Nick's YouTube channel as well to see all his cool stuff. This is an update of their collab from last year, Rainbow Six Siege, uh, with some different weapons uh, and different types of builds uh, this year. And then coming around, this is... Uh, Imagine Rigney's uh, Rapture build, which actually he's had here, uh, no, I think a few years ago, we have a much more in-depth video on this if people want to check that out on the channel. But it is amazing. There's so much going on here. Yeah, this thing is really something. I love the, sort of the depth that's created by, you know, this uh, underwater and above water and then things floating up above. And I love brick-built signage. And at the top of this, the Bioshock, the collection, that's just 
Such a beautiful sign. It, it really, it really is just a great build. And actually, it looks like he has a couple of his books here on display as well. And then the next, I think these are all Over, Overwatch-inspired builds here. So Simon Liu, a few different builders. Uh, got Casey McCoy. I love how Casey's build is, in, is this Overwatch town, but it was nominated for Best Medieval Building. That's pretty good. I, I love how this thing right here has the Lego printed, you know, dish there. Uh, really cool color scheme on that weapon, and then it just happens to have the Lego logo on it. Mercy Staff from Overwatch. And then the Chateau here by Matt Delanois, who's, I think, sort of a work in progress still, but that's looking amazing the more he adds to that. Some nice colorful builds here. Fortnite, some mi kind of micro video game maps. I love the Rainbow Smash. That's pretty cool. Unicorn with little wheels on the back. It's such a great color scheme. Dan Church's awesome uh, Odyssey from Super Mario Odyssey, and then his Fortnite bus in the back there. I love those builds. This might be the largest Lego weapon I've ever seen, the Crescent Rose here. Very, very large. Yeah, takes up two tables. <laughs> then we'll keep coming around this way. So that's Gamer Lug, and yeah, a lot of those builds we'll have uh, more in-depth videos on for you guys to check out. Down here, let's see what we have. It looks like we've got sort of the gaming area. So most conventions will have some sort of Lego gaming happening. So this is based on the old Lego Heroica games that they released a number of years ago now. Greatly expanded, extra rules, that sort of thing. Nice airships here. Yeah, I like that. The sort of a flying kind of pirate ship, and then this one over here is more of like kind of a mystical looking thing. I love those, those uh, what a, man, I don't know if those are dragon wing elements or what. They're really neat looking. Some more smaller scenes and nice colors there. And take a look here at some great architecture this uh this building in the back there really catches your eye the rounded front it's almost like the flat iron building in new york city sort of yeah and i love how the official uh carousel there was cor incorporated into the sort of city center here really nice sort of seamless integration into a city nice sort of theater build there got the ghostbusters headquarters and then a hardware shop at the end over here is some great stuff, starting with uh, some very small scenes, lots of detail though. And then if we walk to the right, one of my favorite builds here at the show is this uh, Lego brick graffiti wall, uh, which I just think is, it's all brick build and just looks amazing the way the bricks stick out. Yeah, this is really wild. Uh, impressive stuff to, you know, think about, you know, where did this, where did this begin? How did they figure out exactly? And then how the texture or the, the colors come in and out of the texture of the brick, you know, exactly the way uh, graffiti would if it were pr sp spray painted onto a brick wall. Different cities over the years. Lots of great micro scale work examples. Uh, some more Minecraft scenes. And uh, battle bots over here, so BattleBots is always a fun fun thing to watch. Marvelous Moon Town. We've got a monorail town on the moon. I think the Welcome to Marvelous Moon Town sign is so wonderful. It's you know, sort of like Welcome to Las Vegas. This, this moon town is you know, a little different to what you might expect from space. We've got a lot of life, a lot of kind of activity and sort of, I would say, joyfulness going on here. And everybody has their helmet and their tank on, and yet we're just kind of living life out here. It's truly a wonderful future. And then down here, the consolidated B-24J Liberator. So you get some nice aircraft there. Nominated for best airship, you got this big Boeing Strato Freighter. Here's the USS Spartacus space exploration vessel. So look at the detail, all sorts of minifigs and everything in there. Yeah, and I really like how they've they've put these nozzle elements sort of like together to represent you know kind of pipes that come out and go over and come back in. A lot of neat details on this. 
and even the top, just the way the top is sort of just, you know, multi-layered sort of details. Move past the people here and get a nice spaceport, classic space scenes. We'll keep going past the group of folks. And then uh, these are both by the same builder here, which they're both excellent builds. The one is uh, General Veer's heads to Hoth. So he's getting in the big walker. Yeah, and this is in, the walker is inside this big sort of like, what would you call this, like a walker hangar. And I think there's something similar to this represented in the new Star Wars land at Disneyland. I really look forward to that. This is a, a great representation of that kind of, of place in the Star Wars universe. The build next to it is one of my favorite Star Wars builds ever here. I mean, we see so many Star Wars builds at these shows that you think it's been exhausted, and then you see someone build Frank Lloyd Wright on Tatooine, and I just love this so much. They even they even created this image over here, like it's Frank Lloyd Wright talking to Luke and R2-D2. And Luke is like <laughs> looking at him, kind of laughing. It's so good. This is, this is amazing. They captured the Frank Lloyd Wright aesthetic so nicely with the, the very flat roofs and everything and the large overhangs where they've got like the speeder parked under there, uh, even the, the corners on the, the kind of out barrier walls. Uh, I just love that so much. So that's a very, very original idea. Shout out to uh, Tom Jacob. Let's see, is that uh, Tom Jacobson there? Very good work. Yeah, and here we have the neighborhood of make-believe, a really, really nice execution of the entire neighborhood of make-believe from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. One of the most influential pieces of television in my childhood, uh, so I have a great appreciation for all the characters and the scenery depicted here. It's kind of a micro version of the, the trolley that I believe we saw a larger version of on the other side of the room. And then here's nice castle bit of a battle happening yeah look at this thing when you realize what's going on in this build it's kind of mind-blowing you've got all these elements just kind of scattered throughout the obviously they're not scattered they're artfully placed but it's just a conglomeration of elements but the shadow cast onto the wall behind the build is this incredible dragon with a knight which that light has to pass through the center of the dragon's neck and cast the you know the the tinted shadow i guess tinted anti-shadow of of the outline of the knight this is brilliant to me I absolutely love this. Yeah, so Amanda Fuke, who, who does these builds, she's done variations of this over the years, and they get better and better every year. Her work is just incredible. She also works for Brickmania and does their animation stuff and does awesome stuff over there, but uh, her builds like this are just always a real treat to see here. And it's, yeah, I think a lot of people have a similar reaction to you, Boone, when they walk up and you just start trying to understand like how exactly the image ultimately ends up there with that jumble of pieces in the middle. Yeah, really great. And down here we've got the the hunt. Uh, these are both Amanda's builds here as well. So you've got the, this is the great Minnesota, I think, get together. And then on the right is the hunt. The hunt. This is good. I like this. This really is immersive. You know, you look at this and you believe that every piece of this exists in this sort of prehistoric world. And you almost forget that it's Lego. Round the corner up here. And... You get some, looks like this is based on some of, uh, some very early cartoons. Yeah, so we've got like Marvin the Martian stuff going on here with, I think, Duck Dodgers and Marvin the Martian um, there. And then, you know, these would be other Looney Tunes based kind of sci-fi little skits. Here's someone predicting the future of McDonald's on the moon. You knew it would happen. So, uh, you know, you just... Do a fly through right there, pick up your McDonald's. Nominated for best humor. This looks like it's a uh, battalion dispensary. So this is based on a real, they have photos of one uh, there. It looks like it's based on a real dispensary from uh, Vietnam in 1966. That's pretty cool. And then smaller vignettes, different war eras. And we round the corner here. Nice uh, popcorn build there. Robot gardener. Got a nice solar system. And little micro fighters. 
I love this little the glow box there, Sith and Jedi holocrons. Yeah, so these are uh, Steve Peterson's builds. He runs the Lego Star Wars fans group on uh, Facebook, and I absolutely love just you know some of the things he's put together here. Um, tell me, so I, I appreciate this. You know, it's a it's a World War II Star Wars crossover. This is in the color scheme of the Ghost. Um, I don't know much about the actual plane. So I believe this is a B-17, which is kind of the iconic, you know, American bomber from the war. And that's why he went with like the SB-17G, the Ghost. So it's kind of like harkens back. They try to, uh, same thing with like the, the tank here. So the M4A3, like the, the Sherman model there. So he kind of kept with the original name a little bit, but also updated it in different ways. But yeah, I just love those. The combination of Star Wars and World War II stuff is such a, such a cool original idea. Definitely need to do a more in-depth video with Steve on those later. Uh, some Nexo Knights. You don't see a lot of Nexo Knights themed builds here, but this builder, especially this uh, crazy tank thing with the the ripper at the top there is pretty pretty amazing. What do we have here then? Is this, uh, let's see, like, like a Marvel? Yeah. Some, yeah, kind of Marvel Universe scenes depicted from several of the movies or inspired by the characters in various Marvel movies. Over here we have uh, Cuteness War 2019. It's Porgs versus Penguins over which one is cuter. So they've both geared up and have some pretty intense weaponry going on there against each other. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> I haven't seen this yet. And I just love the, you know, sort of museum displays here explaining, you know, who the Porgs are, who the Penguins are. And then we've got this battle in the middle. And they've all got helmets on. All the Porgs. <laughs> that is some fantastic uh, original creative work there. Come around here and you've got some nice mech builds. And some really excellent... There's the, the baby missiles up there. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Nominated for Best Mecha. And then down here, I like this When You Wish Upon a Star build right there. It's very nice. That's like taking like the princess themes here, uh, all sorts of... It looks like it's actually a bunch of different, what, Disney themes incorporated in? Yeah, I think these are all Disney princesses okay. flying... You know, they're spaceships that are... The one John's pointing the camera at right now, I absolutely love. I think that's probably Mulan in there. And uh, I love the white dragon wings that yeah, they use. Yeah, the very, the like, guy. oriental white and red there. Yeah, yeah. And so each one of these spaceships is sort of modeled after the personality or, you know, kind of, um, what do you call, like, the home or personality of each of these princesses. We've got the Moana down here. Uh, it's called A Way Away, and it's a spaceship, you know, that looks like kind of one of those catamarans from, you know, the, uh, uh, I suppose, South Pacific. LAPD SWAT tower there. Uh, come, I love the, the little uh, car, like, chibi builds there almost. Yeah, that's good. Ray on the tiny little uh, speeder, and then... Batman and kind of a Tumblr-esque thing there. Maybe Jokers is the best. Look at that. That's funny. <laughs> this next build is really cool to me. I didn't realize what was going on when I saw this from a distance, but it's Cars Classic Space. Every single one of these spaceships has the eyes, you know, like from Disney's Cars. We've got several different ones. All the little, I love how all the little tiny gray, you know, sort of utility vehicles all have those eyes from, from the Cars vehicles. And this is, uh, this is really funny. Layouts like this are a really good example of why if, if you're coming to a Lego show, you really need to take the time to stop and look closely at some of these builds. Because like you said, Boone, when you first, if you just walk by this, you don't even notice that it incorporates those Cars characters. But as you take a closer look, it just comes alive and it, it's really incredible. So then we'll start over here into this next big section of layouts. We'll just kind of walk across the aisle here. So this, I believe, is some of the bricks and minifigs layout. So some people, some of their employees and just uh, fans who build stuff, the bricks and minifigs stores, and they put it on display here. We got some, uh, the Iron Man tower there with a ton of Iron Man suits, Avengers tower, Sanctum Sanctorum, Parker's apartment. 
that's an interesting way to if you, to display interiors. So it's like, uh, you know, the clear pieces kind of keeping the layers separate so you can actually see inside while also making it clear that it goes together. Yeah, it's almost like an exploded diagram, yeah. right? But it, it's happening here in the real world. Nice book journal. And trebuchet. Down here is power lug. Nice little garage and a mansion. How's it going, guys? What are you working on here? Uh, we're just chilling here just chilling. tonight. I have no idea what I'm building, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing tonight? We're doing fantastic. We're just walking around, showing all the creations, checking everything out. What do we have in front of us here? Um, Is one of you Brandon? Yeah, that's me. Oh, Brandon, I love these builds here. Oh, thank you. Um, these are actually modeled off some of the various weapons from uh, Team Fortress 2. I'm actually a community developer for the game. I make items for the Steam Workshop. Uh, it's really fun. Uh, the birds right there are, were released last uh, Christmas in a uh, Smithmas update. Uh, what we have here in front of me is the Shooting Star, which is from the 2015 Invasion update. And right here is the Geiger Counter from the 2015 Invasion update. I really love both of these builds here. This you you did a phenomenal job, sort of. Cap I don't know. I have to admit, I don't know the source material, but just looking at this, you know, kind of what I'm imagining, kind of a laser rifle. Is it, is that yes. sort of what's going on here? It's really nice. Yes, it is a laser powered rifle, kind of like space meets um, first person shooter in a way. It's it's uh, it's a uh, first uh, primary source weapon for a class called the sniper. Um, you cannot hold it without, you cannot shoot the weapon without being scoped in, so it doesn't allow people to do no scopes or anything like that, so <laughs> really fun weapon to make. Uh, I think it has around 1,176 pieces, took around 48 hours, and yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much, yeah. I love that one. Thank, Thank you. Man. Great work. I love your shirt as well. Thanks, <laughs> there you go. Good stuff. Thank you. <laughs> And you get some nice vehicles next to that, and the tavern here, with a nice little cutaway so you can see inside, see all the action in the tavern. And then some more cool characters. This one on the yeah. end here. I think that's my favorite beautiful <laughs> machine. Please say what you were going to say about yeah, it. Yeah, I was just going to point out that's a very unique, uh, you know, you don't see a lot of sort of bionicle construction figures like that with like the dress type of shape uh, using the, the angled pieces there. So Winter Wonderland. Love the four wheeling everybody out, ice fishing, enjoying the, the snow and ice. A couple of nice mosaics here. I always love when builders kind of display the source material for something. So here you can see the builder, uh, what they've kind of based that mosaic off of. Here's a search and find in this build. This this is a really interesting idea here, this castle cutaway, because you, you don't see things like this very often. Usually it's kind of a complete scene, but I kind of like this because it gives you the ability to see within the town, underneath the wall, kind of even within the wall, and it really gives you an idea. You can kind of create the rest of the picture in your mind. It, yeah, and they've given the public a way to engage the build, right, by just saying here's a list of unique things that you could find in this build, and then it gives you know kids and, and adults things to look for. A fun, fun way to engage the, the public. Right, it really makes it more accessible to people walking by, which I think is always a good thing. And then I would like the simple but very nice there uh, R2-D2 C3PO build. Got all the Batman collection. Little Millennium Falcon build. Some large bricks. And then this here is the Brickhead family. So they have a lot of their builds they've done, some of their videos playing, all sorts of crazy stuff. Brickheads they've they've built. So they have been doing a lot of uh, live streaming throughout the show as well, I believe. So you can see some of that. Then we'll come across the aisle here and start off with this uh, first spaceship, which actually we have a, a much more in-depth video on that from last year. So the builder had it here last year, and that was amazing. It was the first time he'd ever come to a brick world or any show and displayed that. But then if you come on the other side here, this is his build for this year. So he went, you know, just took it up a notch with this insane build. You look at the engines on the back and everything. It uh, looks like he's still got sort of a section in the middle there he's finishing up, but it's crazy. Yeah, and this is the bottom of the ship is opening up and things are coming out. This is wild. I love how he stuck with the same theme and just continued to add, you know, another massive ship to the same fleet here. 
Uh, and it says, Explore the Universe of Jam's Lego Studio. So you can check him out uh, on YouTube there and see some of his builds. There's a couple of this build here. It looks like a space Batmobile to me. <laughs> I'm sure that's not what he was going for, but uh, I love the Batmobile, so that's what I see. That's true. Speaking of uh, speaking of Batman, there he makes an appearance right there. Oh, there <laughs> you got some Indiana Jones here, so the classic uh, whip and hat, and the Raiders of the Lost Ark plane fight. Oh, even some movement and some lights there. Kind of got the the film crew shooting the movie. <laughs> That's good. It's such a such a you know kind of detailed display to then just really be the film crew filming the movie. Halo build the UNSC Infinity with some nice lighting inside. Nominated for best mecha, Voltron Legendary Defender. This is uh, they got the official the official kit is uh, intimidated there. Yeah, we've got a sign. This is show off. This thing is cool. This is big. Um, got some lighting. You know, kind of in the torso and head of this build. I think the wings are assembled in a really neat way. I love this build next to We've actually shown this in past tours, I know, but Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea was like a show I watched growing up that was super cool with the submarine just going around fighting all sorts of crazy creatures. Uh, really loved that. This here, this whole next long section of builds is actually all by the same builder, which is insane. The number of things he brought here is crazy. Nicholas Kramer, uh, he's got planes in every shape and size. The FA-18 uh, C Hornet back there, it's really cool. His lights on it that come on. The C-47 Skytrain, the, the has moving parts and everything. He's got kind of a whole runway and everything down here. And then... Even some subs and uh, ships back there. Possibly my favorite, I think, of all of his work is uh, this is his Typhoon class Red October build. So this is based on the book slash movie hunt for Red October. So you can see like the helicopter uh, dropping down there and then the, the larger Red October submarine in the back. So I love that build. You don't see a lot of really well done Lego submarines and that one just really stands out. It's fantastic. Stuart the Minion, massive Minion there. And then 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I love seeing coral underwater scenes. That's always fantastic. Some crazy train. It's like a caterpillar there. It's got a big uh, hump arch in the middle. Temple of the Golden Idol. Some See some like tourists. The nice temple scene. Here's the unregistered Hypercam 2 <laughs> carrying a CD. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is the central tower. So the lighting inside there is really great. I love this. There's just a couple colors throughout most of the build. If you look closely here, so the builder, I saw him putting this together. He actually laid in every single one of these one by one tiles by hand, which is crazy the amount of time he spent doing that. Yeah, and he was over here working on the top of this assembly, I want to say, for a couple of hours just to make sure it got all put together right, and it really paid off. And the people who know uh, you know, about The Legend of Zelda, one of the more recent uh, uh, video games in that franchise, that you know, this represents you know, that game. And uh, the people that recognize that come by and absolutely love this build. It's... Uh a fall designer program, we got uh, Paul Hetherington's build there, uh, and then Jake Sadovich's original, I believe, fan-built ship in the bottle from LEGO Ideas. Then we got the Miracles of Jesus, different scenes from the life of Jesus here. And then down in this section, Boone, what do we have here? Yeah, okay, so this is uh, my table that I'm sharing with Jake Sadovich. So I've got my AFOL design program from BrickLink uh, entry, and you know you, this is available. This is my fire engine. But I also created, at, for Bricks Cascade, uh, the Star Wars version of the fire engine using the LED keychain light figures. I just chopped off the chains, so those are, you know a little over twice as tall as a regular minifigure. Back behind there, we've got Boba Fett. I call this, it's his speeder. I call it Slave 5. Um, you know, he calls his ship Slave 1 and so forth. Uh, moving over here, we've got my Bat Computer, 
which is you know just kind of a, a fairly simple bat cave assembly around a, a screen with video you know that I composited together to create sort of the content of the bat computer and so you can see you know, the Gotham City walkthrough you can see the different Lego official Batmobile models and you can see some of the villains there um, a Batmobile that I built some of my ray guns and we've got uh, my the, the Brick Rogers um, Nominated for best spacecraft. That's cool. Yeah, thank you. This is a space uh, rocket ship that I built in a big collaboration with uh, Brett Hooper, Mark Crookshank, Perry Wang. I think we have a video of that, right, that we did yeah. with you guys. Yeah, so there's a full video on that, so you can look for Brick Rogers. And then at the end of my display here, I've got Pee Wee Herman in the buildable figure scale, along with the magic screen and the front door from Pee Wee's Playhouse. And then we move on to uh, Jake, the rest of Jake Sadovich's builds here. This is um, Santa's sled is getting a ton of attention this weekend. Jake built this for uh, Dupocalypse, so it's based on a Duplo, you know, figure and and vehicle. But he's just really taken it, you know, to another level here and built this kind of rat rod. And it includes some Duplo Tulo, which is kind of rare parts. They only made Tulo for a little while and. He's uh, done a really excellent job incorporating them in. We've got his uh, ATMRT, so it's the A Team at at basically, um, and uh, that one also has been a favorite this this week. We have uh, his design for the slave one that was um, you know done in a scale at the time that he did that. It, you know, it's really a scale that hadn't been done before. His A full design program entry, which is the Isle of Peril. And he's got a nomination for best airship here for the Trident, which is really like this awesome kind of sky-fi uh, tri-plane there. Lots of stuff going on. No, that plane is incredible. I love all the, the massive machine guns he put on it as well. So thank you, Boone, for taking us through the builds. I'm glad you can make it out and display this year. Excellent work as always. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Here we have, I like the... The cars carrying the boxes here stand out. They're very nicely done uh, with kind of, you know, fit perfectly with the boxes on each of these train lines. So the Maersk Blue there is always a favorite of mine. As we round the corner, got some shipping containers from Hamburg. Shout out to Andreas from Zazungabout there, our favorite Hamburg-based Lego media. And then I think we're back in the bricks and minifigs area, so... That just about finishes that section out, and we'll move down here to Okie Lug. And Okie Lug is the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Lego users group. They couldn't decide on one state, so they went with three. This one here we have, uh, it's, we've actually done a much more in-depth video on this from Brick Fair, Virginia last year, so if you want to see more, check that out. But they created a lot of, like, did like custom printing on minifigs and just did a lot to this build. Yeah, Quidditch, man, this is wild. I love the the Lego Keebler Elf. <laughs> yeah. And Toucan Sam, Keebler Elf and Toucan Sam. Here is I think a whole Scooby Doo. So you've got like the haunted mansion, you've got the the ship out there. And then the Kiss concert, which Theonos is in attendance in the back. Yeah. And uh Scooby is on the stage and Shaggy is at the keys, I think, or maybe DJing. <laughs> Get a little early start on Christmas here with the Duplo Christmas tree, uh, Santa Claus, Mrs. Claus, some reindeer. Looks like uh, Okie Lug might have a Christmas show coming up. I like that the I like that the reindeer is built to look like a brick built reindeer, you know, with the the one by one clips upside down up there for his uh, antlers. That's pretty neat. And then we've got Captain Marvel. This is a pretty awesome mosaic. And I absolutely love the Tesla Roadster with the, the mannequin in the seat, you know, that this represents, um, was it? Uh, Elon Musk. Yeah, Elon Musk launched his car into space. And is it still out there? It's still I out there think floating so. around somewhere, yeah, right? Somewhere. So the, the Captain Marvel and the car were both done by Adrian Drake, whose uh, build we'll see of his and not just a minute, a few minutes here is uh, really insane. Some smaller houses. Then this is a micro-scale collab where you build like a little uh, section and you can add on 
castle, pirates, whatever little section of the build you want to do. Here's Alex Taylor's build. We've featured in a few different, he's had this number of brick worlds, so we've seen this a few times in tours. It actually moves and you can interact with the public with that. Heart Lake Mahal. <laughs> it's a nice uh, colorful take on Taj Mahal, which is always good. It could always use a little extra color. We got the, uh, the Dino Circus. And the Memorial Wall here from uh, people active at Brickworld over the years who have passed away. Like the, uh, the Cincinnati sports team's uh, logos, always nice. And then we'll come down here to, this is the build I mentioned a minute ago, Adrian Drake's. This is his insane build that he brought to Brickworld this year. So every few years he brings out some massive spacecraft or something crazy. This is his Star Trek Deep Space Nine space station. And you can see the, the lights are on right now. You can switch those lights up into all sorts of different colors. Uh, it does have like a, a metal frame inside to help keep it up, but the thing's incredible. Yeah, this is wild, man. I, I watched him assemble this yesterday, and I, it's like I knew what it was just from like the pieces that he was putting up, and it was just, I'm blown away. It's incredible. Yeah, the way he's put all the panels in there and attached, he kind of started with the outer ring and went in. You will definitely have a more in-depth video for everyone to check out on this build. But yeah, Adrian's work is just always, always a pleasure to check out. I think uh, there is a screenshot somewhere of the Enterprise docked at Deep Space Nine. So my, if I had a challenge to him, it would be to add the Enterprise. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that one was too simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is KC Brick Lab. So this is Kansas City, a group of builders from Kansas City here. And they are uh, setting up with their whole big... Uh, oh, so they're getting ready for phase two here. So we did an interview earlier where they showed the town with the tornado. Phase two is what the tornado has destroyed. So tomorrow it'll be in phase two. There we go. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff getting sucked up by that tornado. We got sharks and uh, witches and uh, little mechs, polar bears, alligators. There we go. All things you see in a Midwest tornado. <laughs> yes, great work, guys. Can't wait to see it uh, set back up tomorrow. This is nominated for Best Replica Train here. This is the Southern Bell. The layering on the, the rock work in the back is pretty unique. Yeah, next up we've got you know just a really classic fire station, uh, Engine Co. number 9. You know, this reminds me of many stations I've seen. In fact, now that I think of it, I think I've seen a picture of this on Facebook. Some, some, yeah, and it was, somebody was trying to work out the, the how they were going to do the numbers, right? Is that the... Oh, no? Okay. Uh, I built it based on the Force of the Fire Brigade uh, modular and my first Lego fire station, which was the engine company number nine. I think it's model number 905. Kit number 905, I think that was it. So, yeah. Thank you. Good work. Here we have the spaceship sub. Wow. Are those like meatball gun turrets? That's amazing. It's a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I've seen that build before, but that's always, always cool to see. But I love this with the, uh, the buildings with the faces and great colors. Yeah. This is a... Oh, cute. Man, I wish I had a better word. I've used the word whimsical. I've used the word cute. This is, a, you know, the best of that. Here's a... No, we've had some really intimidating-looking tanks uh, this show. Lots of, lots of good stuff there. And some more vehicles all around here. I love the, uh, the hand mixer in the back there. Using, like, the gate pieces for the, the kind of tongs that stick out. That's pretty cool. And Jeep Wrangler, Harbor Tugboat, the tires on the side, that's always a cool look. The spaceship there is very nice with the those or the big orange pieces that they use in the back are pretty unique. I don't th I'm not sure exactly what those pieces are. Uh, they're from the, uh, the the Porsche. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're the wheel wells from the Technic Porsche. That's a great use of that piece. Some more nice vehicles. Happy Toys, 
semi truck. Nice little Iron Man helmet bust. And then a crack and attack on a ship. It looks like the ship isn't doing so well. A little Optimus Prime. The, uh, the funny glass is pretty good there. And then we'll keep moving down over here. So let's grab, we'll just start right in with this section and make our way down. Cyberpunk 2046, welcome to the city. I love, I love these types of builds. The like cyberpunk sort of uh, take on the post-apocalypse theme I think is really fantastic. And you're able to pack in just a crazy amount of details. This brick built lettering here, like the bridge that goes to nowhere is really fantastic. Just cut off bridge. So this is this type of theme is always one of my favorites. Micro Hogwarts Express here. There's a some really awesome stuff. Eli Wilsey did that along with the the build next to it deeper. That's uh, Gringotts with the bank vault sort of underneath. Is that correct? I think that is correct. Yeah. The waterfall of wisdom. Marcus Rollbuehler always brings some awesome stuff out to the show. Tour to Paris. Here we've got, uh, yeah, that is cool. this is a three-person collab. You can see Marcus's build, you can see Eli's build, and then the best part, if I'm not mistaken, I think the talented Grant Davis ended up adding the islands. Or did, maybe he didn't even do that. <laughs> oh, okay, so he added some water. <laughs> so you've, got this, you've got this airship with a city on it? Is that what's going on there? It's awesome. Is that, is that, what, is that what you got going on there, Marcus? Are those the houses are like? Is that uh, Minecraft like printed? What different like faces and stuff? It's brilliant. <laughs> it's it's sky it's average, you know. <laughs> Not his best work. <laughs> uh, this is so the Grant. This is your build here, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. It's, it's uh, you know, pretty subpar. There's not much going on here. You guys just really kind of brought up the B models here and saved the best stuff for later. Exactly. I mean, I, I tried to like show what I was doing over here with the this like, I don't know, wave thing, but it, it really doesn't work. Um, I'm really, you know, missing the mark. I had to fly here. A bunch of things broke in transit. I, that's all I. That's all I have to say. Really. Yeah. I'm glad you could add that. That added a lot to our understanding of the build. <laughs> I'm actually really impressed by this thing. <laughs> that must mean you just aren't a very good builder, Boone. <laughs> yeah, I. I guess not. Next to that, I think we've shown this from Grant in the past. Is <laughs> his mountaintop shrine? Is this the one that can flip over like a Dairy Queen? <laughs> okay. That's where my original inspiration was actually from Dairy Queen. I was sitting in Dairy Queen one day and then had the idea for this build. Anyway, so the magic. Da, da, da. Ah. Always amazing. Great, great work as always, Grant. Here's a bunch more Marcus's builds. I love the uh, like update to the Exoforce uh, stuff there. Uh, the comments I always hear about the clockwork crawler are how the saxophones are used for the joints on the legs. I, you know, I've heard people, you know, who have no frame of reference for who Marcus is, but have seen pictures of that thing and comment on the saxophones. Here's some, he did the four seasons and he put these on like nice wooden bases, almost like little uh, art installments. I like that. Good presentation. Windmill, some nice gates. And then best creature. This is by Setsily, very nice. Minifigs, mini worlds, uh, making kind of vignettes for each character. I love this, this Dutch home here is really cool with the boat kind of pulled up to the back patio. Someone was very inspired by the Banana Man in Lego Movie 2. Oh, and then Sewer Babies, what might be, what do you think, the greatest collab of all time? This is, wow. Wow, it makes so much sense. You know, we've got the Sewer Babies in the sewers. A very complex array of pipes with activity 
bursting out. There's a lot going on there with the sewer babies in the pipes. This whole end section here, I believe, is a large collaboration. Uh, so this is kind of, I'm not, as far as I know, this isn't based on anything in particular, but it's just a bunch of builders creating kind of this uh, in the air cityscape. Um, and so you see uh, Dan Church's build here nominated for best large building is really fantastic. I love like the balloon pieces for the overhangs. Uh, Casey McCoy's little uh, luxury, not, not little, but cool luxury uh, cruise liner back there is very nice. And then the colors on this section from uh, Barbara are fantastic as well. So I like that take on the, the collab there, city in the sky sort of thing. What do we have here? There's, uh, there's the anchors on the Thunderbird. And then Wizard of Oz. With the Sand Spider. Keep moving down here. Mecca Mondays. Indiana Jones vignettes. So this is by John Klapik. I think we've shown him a lot of these in the past. His work is always really cool. He captures those scenes so well. Here's a bunch by Nick Delamora, also known as Brick and Nick. Check him out, as his sign says, uh, on all the socials and on YouTube. Shout out to the Toronto Raptors. Lego Movie 2 logo. Grandfather clock with the mice in it. I like that. Micah really outdid himself with this piece of bread. Let's get this bread. Right. Obtain, the grain. <laughs> Obtain the grain. There we go. That's beautiful, Micah. Thank you. <laughs> Was that the whole point of that? I liked it. Best punchline I've heard today. <laughs> and we've got varied hues here with all the different Lego colors. This up here, I think, is based on uh, an artist's work. And so it's a couple Lego depictions of some artwork here and you can see the the balancing out here of the different sections this is pretty crazy as you're trying to, to angle everything just right and the steel structure they had to build to hold that thing up makes me wonder how did they design it was it hanging from the ceiling at their studio it's a good question this looks like a kind of theme park ride clockworks and then the Wild Mouse roller coaster. I don't know if I've actually seen this coaster running. I'm sure, I'm sure it does, though. And a couple more. A Silent Hummingbird and then some more Cyberpunk 2046. Again, you can see from the example here of like the broken down signs and you know exposed concrete and everything, how fantastic that theme is. So now we're at the Empire Lug display and as you can see there's a lot of builders doing stuff here, a lot of uh, late night carousing. Uh, we've got a several builds around here so here's the Battle of Abafar which is I think how you pronounce that name with all the droid battles going on there. At the boulder chase scene, there's a nice little Indiana Jones scene. Battle on Ryloth and some smaller Star Wars vehicles vignettes. Nice mosaic. I like this Citadel build, the snow, snow terrain is always some of my favorite. And then the Siege of Mandalore, uh, the trans blue, trans clear pieces here really, really make this build pop. Man, this is cool. Aren't Mandalorians like the most awesome guys in the galaxy? I think uh, they are. Isn't yes, that aren't the, they, the aren't TV they. show or something they're coming out with later based on that? Yeah, they are. That's what I thought. Obi-Wan's house. One of them. One of them, okay. <laughs> Kevin Hinkle, how are you doing? Thanks. I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good. We're just trucking along with our tour before they shut the lights off on us here. <laughs> you have 13. That's right. We're going to keep moving. <laughs> Here's some nice trains. Oh, shout out to Chick fil A. I like it. <laughs> it's a nice building there. <laughs> Utapau, Geonosis. These two builds back here are some very, very nice work here. This build right here, Docking Bay 94, you can see the builder right there. Excellent work here. We have a more in-depth video on that display. Really great build. 13-year-old builder. Battle of Hoth. And I love this, this Hoth with uh, some of the classic space figures sprinkled in. <laughs> Those speak to you. They're always welcome. They are always welcome. 
Okay, now we'll keep moving down here. This build right here, Zoids Firefox, nominated for Best Mecha, is really cool. I like the head on that guy. And like the snake in the back. There's some more of that ice planet looking stuff. We got up there with the Doom characters. Here's a Battle of the Bulge, a little World War II action there. We are on YouTube. We're recording a video for YouTube right now, actually. Yeah, so here's a Viking warship and Viking Earl house. Uh, the warship with the brick-built sail, I'm not sure if I've seen that before. If it happened, People very rarely do that. I've, I've seen, yeah, just a handful of neat, you know, solid elements being used to create the sails just recently. And uh, I think it can, can be a really effective use of parts there. And finding peace in the outdoors. Here's a giant Duplo house, castle being built. Keep up the good work, guys. Here's, a, let's see, a space solar system, and it's got the, the trains to move the planets all around. That's pretty cool. Let's keep moving down here. A little Batman scene. I like this. I like this bat. This remote control Batmobile, uh, based on it's like the remote control base from like 1998 or something like that. I think it came out again in 2001 or something. Uh, really cool. I, I love remote control Batmobiles. We had that remote control car growing up. I remember that. It was pretty cool. Good job. Here we have a little uh, D and D Lego D and D. I like it. Keep coming around this direction. The moonwalk here. A lot of, I guess, the, the, the space theme this year. There's a lot of moon-based builds. That's why. And the roller coaster in the background. And a little Christmas village. Double train tracks. That's always nice. I love the triangular IKEA sign with the iconic blue and yellow IKEA colors. There's so much happening in this city here. Lots going on. I think some. I think this is sort of, sort of supposed to be. Chicago. There's some Chicago buildings oh, in look here. At the, look at the KFC. How they use these angled uh, plates in around to sort of emulate the bucket that would be up on top of the building and on top of the sign. That's cool. Some nice Technic trucks and cranes. Oh, massive uh, pirate ship up there. And there's some more brick built sails. <laughs> Just as we were talking about it. And dragons. Yes. Down below. We've got some Jetsons characters here in Mosaics. Ooh, I love the mine mech there. The power miners. And Lego Lego. You gotta love Lego Lego. This Ninjago loft is pretty great. It's like all the Ninjago characters moved into a nice uh, loft apartment there. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Lloyd's on the like on the phone, is it? Oh no, I'm sorry, he's chopping sushi. I thought he yeah, I thought he had a phone up to his head. Common mistake. Airships in the background. I think we got some uh, Stranger Things characters be there, yeah. This look good. Oh man. Steve Steve with the dangerous bat. That's good <laughs> stuff. Some Lego pull pack pullback cars. And some bionicle characters. I like this guy with the big yellow weapons. <laughs> Come around to the arcade, and then we'll end this section with this build here, which is the angel form. Looks like a dress frame. <clears throat> Kevin Hinkle wanted everyone to see this one right here. Okay, now we'll come down here and Hit up this section. <clears throat> what, do, what do you guys think of this display so far? This is all part of the same display here, isn't it? It's very intense. Is it? Yes, we're just going over it right now. And I think we went the wrong way. We started at the end and came this way, but the message is not lost either way you go. And it's, this person has a lot to say. And I personally would love to see it all in one place for everybody to see and and read. 
um, because that might be a more, like this medium speaks to people who are here, but it might be a more versatile medium if it was, I mean, it's amazing. It's very, very intense. Thank you. We'll take a look down at it. <laughs> so yeah, this is the same builder who built all of these different scenes with like uh, descriptions of each kind of scene inside their head here. Wow, look at this one with the flames. This is the first sculpture they ever built. So I would guess these are depicting kind of like different states of mind an artist's expression of how they are encountering, you know, themselves in their own consciousness. This one down here, I think, uses some of the, maybe like netting technique there for the, the blanket. I like that. In the marble field. And then as we move down this direction, we can take a look at, oh, there's some lower tables over here. I missed this stuff. So some smaller, almost a little more lenticular mosaics. There's a tactile art, the center of power. And then some bubbles. I like that, just using all sorts of domes and rounded lego pieces this is interesting art because the signs say please touch gently you know it's, you're used to seeing signs that say please don't touch <laughs> and they've created a tactile experience here there's uh it's over anakin i have the high ground i think that's very true i love this uh velika's wrath giant bionicle character Over here we've got a couple of fantastic uh, games that you could, the public can play. So we've got this Batman themed pinball machine and a claw machine. So we have more in-depth videos on each of these and they're super cool uh, with the way when they're actually operating. The builder is a really great guy. Talked with him earlier. Keep going around here then. I think the, the same builder did those is some customization on some of the like Lego big figs and some of these other characters. Then here is, I think maybe possibly Mishlug, the Michigan group with some of their massive buildings and their train layout. Got the McDonald's at the end. These skyscrapers are massive. Yeah, they're really something. I love this one in the middle with the sand green roof at the very top. And uh, there's all these people. Are those superheroes climbing up the fire escape? Or maybe villains? This is good stuff. Mishlug is known for their crazy massive buildings, so that's really cool. <clears throat> Here's a couple of builds by L Leah Chan and some of her really amazing uh, space builds here. You can see them all lit up in preparation for uh, World of Lights. I love this stuff. I love NASA. I, I remember watching you know shuttle launches when I was a kid. This stuff is so cool, and she did really an excellent job recreating these scenes. You've even got, like, the tracks in the dirt, and uh, really awesome. This, these actually remind me of the NASA um, Miniland creations at, uh, like, Legoland Billund. And then another build by her here, the nominated for Best Spacecraft. Really, I think actually all of this is her work, so she has a lot of kind of NASA, since that is the theme of the show. Astronauts, uh, all sorts of different builds. I love this one on the back of the plane moving the, sh the space shuttle. Down here is a 500% scale Millennium Falcon. So this is, I think, 3D printed, but made to look like Lego, which is pretty crazy. I think that's the case with all of this stuff here. Yeah, and these are recreations of actual uh, actual models, and so you can see the you know the set numbers on each of these mock cards. And both of these would be really small versions of the Millennium Falcon, but done in 500%. That's really awesome. Queens Ridge Castle. So you got a nice castle scene here. <clears throat> Boat coming into dock. And a couple of Star Wars scenes back here. So you've got Scarif. 
the big tunnel, lots of lights on it, the islands, and then over here we've got the Death Star. And the Death Star, once again, is something we featured more in depth in the past, so you can look for a video on that. Lots of detailed rooms in here, all sorts of action going on. And now we'll go down the last wall here of Creations and finish out the show. It's like here's just a few builds maybe from some kids, possibly one of the competitions. It's the fleet of ships. This Union Pacific Caribbean passenger cars are really nice, presented very nicely there, not just uh, you know, kind of created a whole scene around them. I love how a lot of those tiles are at a 45 degree angle. Some M4 variant Lego weapons. Got a trench knife, tomahawk. Really nicely done bridge scenery there. And nice bell tower. I love the German plane on the, uh, the mirror. And then also the, the World War II scene there. This is some great artwork and some great builds. Yeah, man, look at these colors. Just the three, you know, you got the neon green kind of, I don't know, is that sort of a magenta color and kind of this light blue? I don't know the proper terms for these colors. I wonder if the, is this artwork from something or is the artwork done by the creator? That's a good question, I don't know. It's the Battle of the 501st. And then if we keep coming down here, you've got kind of Ninjago Temple on the rocks. A little Rock'em Sock'em Robots. A few Marvel Five Nights at Freddy's scenes. <clears throat> Some Lego weapons down here. Lots of different variations. You see, uh, this is something interesting about American shows versus European shows. You wouldn't see any weapons at the European Lego shows, so some of these types of builds are unique, more unique to the American shows. Got the whole Catan box here. I love what they've done with the cover of the Catan box. That's really great. Haunted house, some military helicopters, vehicles. Battle of Endor. And AT-AT takedown. Some other Star Wars scenes. We got Dracula's castle. Yeah, with the Scooby-Doo characters again. I, I I'm surprised at how often we've seen Scooby-Doo at this convention. I, I, I you know, yeah. I imagine that you know the uh, that's the Mystery Machine with the Scooby-Doo gang is a set that's several years old, but people. Well, that's are, a people good are point. Excited. I don't know. <laughs> Here's a series of builds and vignettes from the Vietnam War. You can see the Huey helicopter coming in. Armored troop carrier. And, and some other smaller World War II scenes. I like what this builder's done with the, the mining operation almost here, going out into the train car. And then the California Gold Rush. Very nicely set up scene with some of these uh, construction characters. Each kind of have their own section of the build. And uh, shout out to Stuart running from the flames there. <laughs> Por portal 2 Aperture Labs. Nice Portal 2. A couple of scenes there. And then we end with some very old Lego. The Grey Track era. I love the flag on top of that yellow building over there with an older Lego logo. And there you have it, folks. I believe that is everything here at Brickworld Chicago. We uh, certainly did our best to show every single build that we could uh, at the whole show. So I don't know how long this video will have ended up, but it's, it's going to be long. Thank you for watching. <laughs>